Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. My name is Will Keller. Thanks for tuning in to the Will Tell Truth presentation series. Uh, I'm extremely happy to be here. The last couple of weeks we've been hectic, and uh, my apologies for the uh, for rescheduling this presentation. I'm thoroughly excited and happy spring. Blessed spring equinox. Uh, this is the time officially spring is here. Ostara, new beginnings, the jump off of the actual natural new year, right? Because now we're back into the season of life. And uh, I'm going to talk a little more about uh, the season of sovereignty, is what I call it, versus the season of sacrifice, which is what the, uh, the parasitical class, uh, well, that's what we call it, because we can observe some of these events throughout history. And this is a time period that they favor uh, because of the natural energies um, from the sun and the earth, what they're going through. It is prime, fertile time to uh, have certain type of you know psychological operations to create trauma and have certain type of events so uh let me check in real quick how's everyone doing we are live on all the social media platforms including my website uh, willkeller.com and also on the one great work network there we go Give a shout out in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Now, this presentation, since I, you know, I had some life events and had to um, reschedule a couple times, I added on to this presentation, fine tuned it, all this kind of good stuff. But what I ended up doing was making a massive presentation, huge, hundred over a hundred slides, and that would be several hours. And I don't want to do that so uh i split it up into two presentations which i was going to do this anyways um so i now the second part is pretty much made and i'll, I'll do some fine tuning to that so the in two weeks when i have my next live presentation this is going to be part two to this presentation here spirituality meaning and purpose this goes hand in hand with the last few presentations that I, I did on morality, philosophia, philosophy, and especially the last one, which was consciousness, evolution or devolution. So this is kind of building off of those presentations. If you haven't seen them, definitely go to my website and check those presentations out uh, to get some kind of um, you know foundation uh, to what I'm going to be re referencing in this presentation. So, uh, without further ado, let me check a couple things. What's up, everybody? Patty, Sarah, Fred, Logan. Excellent. I think that's uh, Steve on Twitter. All right, we got some people in here. Very excited for this. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, the Vernal Equinauts. At Equinox, the energy is prime. It's ripe right now for myself to sacrifice the energy here. Hopefully, uh, you guys get some good value in this. So without further ado, here we go. So again, the title of my presentation is Spirituality, Meaning, and Purpose. I am... Of course, this is a huge topic, spirituality. Everyone has, you know, an opinion, an angle of what they think spirituality is. Um, and within these two parts of presentations, I'm definitely going to cover a lot of ground. In this one, part one, I'm going to be talking about the meaning and purpose of spirituality. These two words, these two questions, what does it mean? What is its purpose can be applied to anything. This is part of the philosophical um, mentation that we need to do with any type of category, right? So what does it mean? What's its purpose? Let's dive in. So, of course, I'm going to start with my caveats. Simplify the profound. In a world saturated with complex ideas and false concepts, there exists a unique skill the art of simplifying the profound. 
My passion and expertise lie in unraveling the intricate tapestry of metaphysical and philosophical topics, transforming them into ex accessible and easily understandable content that gives someone clarity on what is actually happening in the world by understanding nature. So the mission is clear to make the profound not only comprehensible, but also applicable in our daily lives through education of the fundamental dynamics of reality and to gain an accurate perception of the causal factors on how to create change in life. This is my mission statement for all the work that I do, whether that's you know, huge, complex to topics, and I distill them and synthesize them down. I'm trying to take, uh, you know, my background being deep within the studies and research of metaphysics and the occult traditions. When you look back on those ancient texts and that knowledge, it's hard for a lot of people to make the connection. Well, how does this information apply today? How can I utilize this? What does this mean to what is going on in the world of human suffering, the problem? So this, that's my mission, mission statement. And that's how I'll jump it off. Simplify the profound. So seek truth. Truth is the statement or quality of being in accordance with fact in reality. Truth is objective and is simply that which has occurred in the past and is occurring in the present. The truth is not relative, meaning not based upon beliefs or opinions. It is independent of human perceptions and can be discovered, understood, and our subjective perception can align with objective truth in reality. Knowing the truth exists in knowing the truth exists is the prerequisite of seeking knowledge and wisdom. Don't twist my words. Knowing the truth, the totality, the the all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about what is going on in the world. We can understand that the truth can be discovered, known, and can be applicable in life, meaning you can align your behaviors to what has manifested and what is manifesting the truth in the natural world, in reality. So seek gnosis. Gnosis stands for knowledge. Knowledge refers to the understanding, awareness, or familiarity with facts, information, skills, or concepts acquired through experience, education, observation, or study. It involves the possession of information that is true, justified and Relayable, enabling individuals to make informed judgments, solve problems, and engage effectively with the world around them. Knowledge may, may come to us through our senses, by transforming sensed impressions to our consciousness, or it may come to us directly from the cosmos via inspiration, synchronicity, intuition. That, that is available information for us to filter through the truth discovery process of the trivium, right? Knowledge, understanding, and then wisdom, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So, belief is no way required, only the truth. Absolutely. It's our job as human beings, you know, we exist in this reality. Um, especially, I mean, when we're, we're babies up to the formative years, we are a sponge. What are we doing? We are observing, we are taking in the necessary raw data, the information, right? And that lays the, the formatting operating system for our, our operation as a human being. So seeking truth, seeking gnosis, this is an archetype of the the seeker the hermit <clears throat> this can be activated this is what i maybe in the mo modern terms someone would say the 
uh, the conspiracy realist or theorist, someone that is seeking and questioning. What makes someone have that archetype activated is obviously high teachability, right? Where you are skeptical, slightly skeptical and slightly trusting. There's no polarization to one extreme or the other. You are in balance. You are taking in information, considering it, running it through that truth discovery process of the trivium, <clears throat> considering it, considering it, holding it in thought, and then t uh, going through that process and applying where need be. So what is knowledge? Information can show us how to do things, but until we know the why, we have no knowledge. To be aware of effect, effects is to be informed of the physical nature of the universe. Everyone can be informed of the physical nature of the universe and still lack knowledge until he or she begins to know. It is still man in the body quite unaware. The reality is to learn and grow and is meant for asking questions, meaning the why. Because asking, asking why stimulates critical thinking and discovery of self and nature. So, like I've said many times, we're going on a quest, right? Asking that the most important question, which is why, now you're getting down to the causal factors. Until you ask that question, this is what I'm implying, that you don't actually have knowledge. Ignorance is the absence of truth. Knowledge is the accumulation of truth. To understand that it is based in truth is to understand the why. And of course, wisdom is the application of truth. Knowledge applied. True knowledge is based in truth from of related to. Belief, on the other hand, is the enemy of knowing. The meme master Kyburn from Game of Thrones, belief is so often the death the death of reason. So belief is a statement of accepting something as true or real without conclusive evidence or proof. It involves holding a conviction or accepting a proposition as true, whether it pertains to factual claims, opinions, values, or religious doctrines. Beliefs can be f formed through various means, including personal experiences, cultural upbringing, indoctrination, and social influence. They play a fundamental role in shaping individuals' perceptions, attitudes, behaviors, and decision-making processes. So why is belief so dangerous? Why is belief so powerful. I know there's a lot of people, remember, we're, we're talking about spirituality. It's all about belief in, in modern spirituality. I'll break that down a little bit later. It's all about your beliefs. Whatever you believe is, is the truth. This relativistic uh, mindset. It's not the actual belief that is powerful or dangerous. It's the mentalism that is actually behind the information. It's the mentalism. It's the force of consciousness, of mind, that actually has the power. That's what it is. The belief itself is just fantasy, a mental construct, just information, not based in truth. But yet, that mentalism affects behavior which someone will take actions, they will act on that belief. So it is, the, it is the mental dynamic that makes someone do something, anything. It's all about the state of mind. This is the first natural law. The all is mind. The universe is mental. 
So belief is the enemy of knowing, especially in always. That's eternal. That is eternal. But in our current modern age, where we have a major problem in the world of human suffering, people cling to beliefs as security blankets. It makes them feel safe and secure, right? They have something to believe in without that activation of the seeker and seeking the gnosis, the knowledge. This is what makes it so dangerous. They are completely unconscious to what they, the information that they hold and how that influences their behavior and actions or lack thereof. So, call it what it is, right? This is something that I, I try to stand by, no euphemisms. The more accurate our definitions for words or concepts are, the better our clarity of meaning and therefore our understanding of those words or concepts will be. I will not use euphemism, euphemisms to sugarcoat words or statements. The obfuscation of words or concepts is common in modern culture and is a direct attempt to confuse, misdirect, and limit information, resulting in lack of understanding, which is the definition of ignorance. So, communication is important, but comprehension is key. What is the meaning of definition? It means clarity of meaning. So I like to define words as much as possible. So when I say a word, you know my position. I like to bring it to the etymology, which means the origin, the original vibration of that word, what it was used for. Sure, words can change through history, right? You say a word now, it, it's completely in opposition to what the original meaning was. That energy matters. That energy has an effect. So when I say spirituality, there's a whole bunch of people already have their own mentally you know, preconceived definitions of what that is. So as I go through this presentation, they're filtering all the information that I'm expressing through their own perceived definition. So I'm going to define words and I'm going to try to simplify the profound. You can raise your awareness. You can gain so much knowledge just by going through the etymology of words. It's mind blowing. It's one of my, my favorite things to do. And I'm going to do a presentation on lexicon on etymology. And I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be in a couple weeks. So we see this all through modern, modern culture, the obfuscation, the inversion of words and concepts. So getting down to the definition is important. So what is spirituality? Right? This is going to be our first category. This is the, this is the question that we're going to dive into. So what does it mean? Well, first, let's, let's rewind and talk about meaning. Meaning is a verb. To signify, significance, intend, to do something, have in mind, to think, to plan. That's mean. Meaning, noun, makes sense. That which is intended to be expressed. Also, an act of remembering. So, meaning refers to the significance or sense that something carries, either a word, a concept, an action, or an essence. This presentation, and especially part two, I am going to dive into the meaning of spirituality. The meaning that is based in the natural world, based in reality, facts, logic, reason, in truth, and that's my job to express that meaning, the significance. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to life? So this is what I mean by meaning. The symbol right there on the right, that is the circle dot. 
an ancient and profound symbol that I feel represents meaning. Because when you're thinking about meaning, you're getting down to its essence. Okay? That's what the dot signifies. The meaning. Clarity of meaning. Higher definition. The circle can represent all-encompassing. The universe. Existence. And then you have the meaning. The dot. This is another reason why uh, definitions for words and concepts are so important. Out of infinite possibility of meaning, you're bringing it down to the finite. So let's talk about what is purpose. Purpose to, to put forth intentional aim, goal, proper function for which something exists. You can also look at it as propose, right? To intend to do something by design. Purpose refers to the reason for which something is done, created, or exists. It implies intentionality and direction, suggesting that there is a goal or objective to be achieved. What is the purpose? Of spirituality the arrow in the bullseye also the circle dot right this is the goal the purpose for spirituality what is it what is it intended for that's obviously a divine question and also one of self-discovery which we're going to uh, dive into so, when we think about the modern world, what you know, what does the average person think spirituality is? Right? This is the exoteric spirituality. Exoteric means the outer ring. If you're looking at the the target, the outer ring is the exoteric. As you move to the inwards, to the bullseye, to the dot, you are moving into the inner rings, the inner essence, the esoteric. Obviously, the bullseye is the truth. So, the exoteric of spirituality, right? This is what the average Joe, the, the mainstream populace, what they think it is. And actually, you know, uh, spirituality new age spiritual spirituality has definitely changed in the last 20 years from you know like the 70s 80s and 90s it's definitely it it itself has its own evolution which we're going to talk about but as of right now this is how i see it right you have the christ consciousness feeling bliss it's all about feeling bliss um you have an image of this is a musician. Um, I forget her name. Very, it's quite funny to you know see her and see how she operates. Um, that's got to take at least ten hours to get ready. But um, you know someone that's quote unquote super spiritual. And then you have you know meditation and and the the chakra systems, good vibes only. Um, a cliche picture, everyone jumping in the air, symbolizing feel good, uh, this, you know, fake sense of unity. Uh, and then you have men that are, uh, this is for, I'm representing the men as, as being overly polarized, right? Overly in the, the feminine energy, the feminine dynamic and, and crystals as well, right? Now, the chakra system, meditation, crystals, I dig it. Right? These are sections that have certain uses. They are not the purpose. They are not the meaning of spirituality. So in this slide, I would say this is the exoteric. And sure, the list can go on and on and on. But in the nutshell, when you say spirituality, a lot of people think positivity. Good vibes only. Right? So we're going to do the apothetic method first talking about what spiritually spirituality is not first and then we're going to dive into 
what it is, the purpose and meaning. Unauthentic spirituality is where individuals engage in spiritual practices superficially, often for personal gain or to project a certain image. It often leads to polarization where individuals adopt extreme views and attack others who don't conform to their beliefs. This polarization can hinder genuine connection and understanding. Unauthentic spirituality also fosters passivity, where individuals use spiritual ideas as an excuse for inaction, avoiding personal responsibility and the causal factors of human suffering because it feels negative or uncomfortable to engage. Emotional reactivity is another hallmark where individuals may claim spiritual superiority, but are easily triggered and reactive to external events. In essence, in essence, spirituality is not ignoring the truth of the enslavement of the planet. Ignoring the truth at all is not anything spiritual but with the issues of human suffering and what is going on in this planet <clears throat> ignoring the truth of that is not spirituality quite the contrary actually see no evil <clears throat> hear no evil speak no evil this is very much a part of the unauthentic spirituality of good vibes only, uh, don't look at the negative, et cetera, et cetera. So I am not here to be all love and light. I'm here to kick ass for freedom, truth, morality, nature, and for the future generations of our children. That's what I'm here for. So I'm going to have a little bit of light, a little bit of love, a lot of bit of anger, righteous in, indict, uh, indignation, a little bit of hood, and a lot of bit of country. And I'm going to utilize my capacities and my capabilities and my attributes to fight against immorality and slavery as much as possible. Deception. Beliefs. I have no problem saying, I don't know, I don't hold beliefs. Right? I am a seeker of truth. That is my goal. This is what I want to do. This is an ongoing, continuous journey. That does not mean I'm going to know everything. That does not, that's not what that means. It means that I don't hold ideologies and information that are not aligned to nature and truth. That's what that means. So, what is spirituality? Well, we got to break it down. We got to break it down. And we got to start with spirit. What is spirit? The etymology, spirit from the Latin, spirare or spiro or spiritus means a breathing, respiration, and of the wind. It means breath or breath of life, inspiration life disposition also possibly derived from the uh proto indo-european etymology of and i could be pronunciating this incorrectly species to blow spirit in the verb means to animate to make active or energetic to inspire so spirit is the non-physical universe, universal essence of the creative animating principle of life or life force, one in the same. So when people hear the word spirit, that can come with a lot of religious baggage, right? But what does it mean? Just because a word derives from somewhere, which I would say actually quite the contrary it derives from 
you know, a language that is much ancient and much more in symbiosis and harmony with the natural world and truth. So its etymology could be is most likely dead on high probability of that. You know, the, the proto Indo uh, European um, is at least for the English language, it's over 50 percent. That's where the English language derives from, you know, Latin, Greek, Sanskrit and Arabic. So spirit, what is it? What is it? It is the universal creative life force energy that animates everything. I did a toroidal uh, symbol. To me, this is a good representation of spirit. If you have to, if I have to use an image, we can see, you know, the sacred geometry, the golden ratio, the toroidal, the hyperboloid, uh, the inverse hourglass, the spiral. We could see this all throughout nature and in everything, right? Very good symbol. So when we think of to animate for, for human beings, for, for animals as well, this is where animal, the word derives from the anima, means soul. Now, I want to distinguish soul and spirit. What's the difference? Spirit is the animating life force from source, from creation, from creator that animates everything. Soul, on the other hand, would be the persona that we are developing. Our uh, the, the single unit of monad, the single unit of consciousness that we are developing as as we evolve in this experience so do plants have souls plants do not have souls plants are connected to the soul of the earth the celest the celestial soul animals humans have souls we are here to develop our soul through our e evolution spirit is that which is animating it is the the dielectric force of life so what is spiritual let's take a look at the word and again i'm going to throw some green language in here um in a little bit so spiritual from latin spiritualis spiritalis or from latin spiritus pertaining to spirit or of pertaining to breath, breathing, wind, or air. You know, it's also interesting that it's saying uh, wind. In the ancient Comitian tra traditions, this is how they symbolized spirit. They used a flag because they saw spirit as wind, right? You can't see wind, but you can see it's an, it's an effect. You could see the effect of wind. So that that's uh, that sent the symbolizing of the flag also represented uh, nature, which is pronounced nature, which meant creation, creator. So moving on, we have spiral from Latin spira, a winding around a fixed point or center, a coiling. Proto-Indo-European, we have sper, to twist, to turn. Remember what I said about a fixed point, winding around a fixed point, the spiral. Then we have a spire, which is a sprout or shoot of a plant, a tapering stalk, uh, stalk of grass. Also, spire means extended to a height in the manner of a spire, spire a, uh, to rise aloft, to rise up, right, at, in a spiral direction, which, again, moving back to the toroidal, the golden ratio, the spiral, we see this all everywhere in the natural world. This ge geometry, this is a way for us to observe nature. 
and put two and two together to have a deeper understanding of us, ourselves, and the macrocosm, the larger forces of nature, right? Everything moves in a spiral, either forward or backwards, either evolving through evolution, centropy, or backwards or actually compressing, that is involution, entropy, expanding, contracting, breathing in, breathing out. Everything correlates, right? So if you break down spiritual, right, you can do spiral or spirit or spire as the first part. The second part, you have ritual. So what is ritual? Etymology lat from Latin ritus means a ceremony or practice. Also from the Sanskrit rite. R I T E means going a way or a custom right also from Latin ritus um, and from the Proto-Indo-European roots of re means to reason, to count, to observe carefully. Very, very important. This is what our human attributes are. Logic and reason, higher order thought functions to e observe carefully. Observe what? Well, we can observe ourselves, how we interact with others and with all life. We can observe our emotional ecology, our internal ecology, our thoughts and emotions. We can observe our behaviors and our actions, our triggers. We can observe each other. We can observe the natural world and use that reason to understand that there is a flow or a rhythm of life inherent in nature of creation of truth and then we can perform ceremonies have a custom have a practice have a habit that aligns with truth, with nature, with the reason that we have discovered that's inherent from creation. So also uh, the Proto-Indo-European root of R, A-R, also means to fit together. Synchronicities, syncretism correlation and correspondence everything fits together it's also from latin re meaning turn back to again self-respect turn back to oneself to look again return to nature return to creation look again humanity is in opposition Look again, remember, respect, return. Now, spiritual, the A-L at the end, the suffix, right? That is Latin uh, from the al or the alis, and that means of, like, related to, or pertaining to. Just like natural, nature means creation. Natural means of like from related to creation. So what is spirituality? Spirituality is a state of mind and practice. Spirituality is your personal relationship with reality and the progression of evolutionary consciousness. Spirituality is the practice of becoming a moral human being and to seek symbiosis with nature and all its relatives. Touch on that in a minute. Spirituality is understanding as a co-creator and steward, 
taking responsibility and right actions towards freedom and higher consciousness. That's spirituality. We can see over here on the right, mind, spirit, body. That's an analogy. Everything is spirit. Everything has spirit. Animate and inanimate ox, uh, uh, objects. Let me, let me explain. Does your house not have a personality from the energy that you have imbued in it? Does your car not have certain characteristics and attributes from you yourself? It is your extension. You are forging energies, in your energy, your spirit into the way you keep your house, the way you keep your car, etc., etc. That's what I mean by inanimate animate objects, right? The way you do a painting, write a book. So spirituality, we'll go back to this, right? With the spiral and the ritual. The spiral ritual. Spiritual means one understands natural law or the laws of creation, the laws of nature as the fixed point of creation and daily habits of right ethical and moral action will advance or decline one's personal evolution. Life is not linear. It is a spiral like the geometry of the golden ratio in the natural world. Our thoughts, emotions, and actions are either in harmony or in opposition with the rhythm of life. The consequences are inevitable. Embodying holistic consciousness to strengthen, discover, participate, and progress forward upon the spiral path is a daily discipline. Your daily choices are your habits. These are your rituals, what you do in the morning, midday, in the evening. This is your ritual. It, that's simply what it is, habits. Sure, you can have larger ceremonies like today for Ostara for a uh, the signifying, you know, officially spring reverence to the sun and to nature. Absolutely, you can have larger ceremonies. But a condition of the self or of humanity is based on individual actions. The single units make up the whole. So what you do on a day to day basis, is it in harmony with creation, with nature, with truth? This is what's going to decide you, the condition or the quality of your spirituality. So the spiritual domain. The spiritual domain is often referred to as the metaphysical realm or beyond the material plane, not spelling here, of existence or the physical plane. The emphasis on the metaphysical typically negates the physical plane as illusory or less important. But this one sided focus is an imbalance in perception. In truth, the spiritual domain is both the metaphysical and the material physical plane. For there is no separation between planes. Metaphorically, they are simply two sides of the same coin. Both realms reflect and affect each other, creating a system or substrate of operation. This domain is non-man-made, immutable, binding, omnipresent, universal, and objective, governed by laws of creation slash nature. Forgive my uh, spelling errors. I obviously spell check did plan instead of plane, and I overlooked it. But when we think about the exoteric or modern spirituality, there's a huge e emphasis on the metaphysical plane. Right. So the physical is seen as illusory. Oh, it's the material 
it's it's an illusion it doesn't matter that is an extreme dangerous polarization and imbalance the physical and the metaphysical are one in the same it's one unit just as the quarter the coin you have heads and tails both sides of the same coin the truth is the silver that's what the truth is the silver if you're looking at it from heads or tails you're perceiving it from the heads or the tails you're looking at it from a half truth you only have one half of the perception the silver in in the metaphor of the of the coin the silver is the truth the essence so this is important to to understand understanding that the you can look at it as more like an inwards out, outwards or better yet the toroidal right the toroidal as a funnel up coming down inwards up downwards outwards inwards it's a system of operation and absolutely the natural world reality the realm of the real it is objective meaning we all have the potential to recognize the objective laws or the objective manifestations that have manifested in the physical realm right i say the physical realm because we can use our senses our five senses to observe and see that there is we can observe and gain information in the physical domain it the metaphysical is what the invisible it takes it takes higher order functions and, and processes to uh to discern this is why it's so important to align our perception with that which is the objective binding immutable laws of nature the governing dynamics of this reality so more on the natural world again natural inherent having a basis in nature reality and truth non-man-made or of or related to creation <clears throat> that's its etymology creation is nature and we are not separate from it we are a part of it the living creative dynamic intera interacts with humans through principles of expression these immutable and binding boundary co conditions calls called laws are in place by creation nature to guide humans within the experience this realm is a school the university for beings to experience, evolve, learn, to lower entropy and apathy through self-synthesis, which is an extraction of imp impurities or immoralities. Nature and her laws are objective and absolute. The natural world is the realm of the real. There is no lie in nature. It has no euphemism. Getting down to the bullseye the truth is the bullseye right when we think about spirituality and spirit the creative intelligent energy that is and mind consciousness that is in everything we are not separate from that we are part of that system so natural law is the governing dynamics of creation which deliver the consequences of humanity's collective behavior natural law is the fundamental substrate for all phenomena it is real natural order and the objective absolute truth by which a spiritual mature human strives for harmony and alignment towards evolution 
This is how we evolve. We understand that natural law, the laws of creation are put there for us to, <clears throat> to learn and grow through so that we can evolve in consciousness. They are the boundary conditions. So the knowledge of natural law is bring is bridging the threshold from immaturity to spiritual adulthood, whereby a human being has conscience and willfully exercises conscience by moral right action through natural law. The objective laws of nature, which operate in perfection, they are perfect order. It is the real natural order. It is cause and effect. By no means am I saying humans are perfect or that we can be perfect. That's not the case. Like I said, this is a school, a very real school. I'm not implying that it doesn't have it does not matter. I'm not implying that it is an artificial simulation. I'm implying that it is a simulation in the definition of it is uh, imitating the macro. It is imitating creation on the larger bodies, the universe itself. How the laws of nature operate on Earth, it's the same as the universe. That's what I mean by simulation. So we can learn through these laws. And what are we learning? We're learning how to operate, how to <clears throat> align to the rhythm of life, to ascend the spiral staircase, so to say, to become spiritual, to understand what that means and what is its purpose, to become an, a human being. A human being means that you have logic and reason and care in hand, and you know the difference between right action and wrong action, which is conscience, the knowledge of right and wrong. And then you willfully exercise that conscious in your action. That's what I mean. That's what being a, an, a spiritual adult a true human is all about. Unfortunately, we do not have that in the modern, our modern times. We have immaturity through deception and ignorance. So we talked about spirit, the spiral path. We talked about the natural world, the governing dynamics, natural law. In the natural world, Everything is intricately interconnected and dependent on relationships. From the smallest microorganisms to the grandest ecosystems, life thrives through symbiotic connections and inter interdependence. Plants rely on sunlight, sunlight, water, and soil for nutrients for growth, while animals depend on the plants for food and shelter, even non-living elements such as weather, weather patterns, and geolog geological formations influence and are influenced by living organisms. Recognizing the fundamental role of relationships in nature highlights the interconnected web of life emphasizing the importance of cooperation, adaptation, and mutual respect for the flourishing of all beings. This is what meaning is in spirituality. It means that we are in relationship with nature with truth, with creation, with each other. What is the quality of those relationships?
relationship, the definition means your position to. What is your posi position to the fixed point of creation, to the fixed point of nature? What is your position? What is your relationship to truth? What is your relationship to nature, natural law? What is your relationship to morality, to yourself, to community, to freedom? What is your relationship to the current problem of slavery? What is your relationship to the solution? These are important, vital questions that we all can ask ourselves and should ask, our, ask ourselves on a regular basis. We are all spirit. We are all connected. We are all relatives. The interconnectedness of all things means what you do in life matters, affects your household, it affects your local community, it affects the whole biosphere of nature. That energy ripples out, reverberates. So what are the billions of human beings? What is their position to truth, to what is going on in the world? to the solution. What is your relationship to honesty, integrity, morality, ethics? Big questions, deep questions, vital questions. That's what spirituality is all about. Asking those hard questions to yourself in the mirror. So the web of weird. This is a um, from the Norse tradition. The concept of interconnectedness, epitomized by the web of weird in Norse mythology, emphasizes the intricate relationship between cause and effect. Just as each strand in the web is linked to another, every action and event in our lives reverberates through the fabric of existence, shaping the course of destiny or our condition. Just as the Norns weave the threads of fate, our choices and deeds intertwine with the greater tapestry of the universe, symbolizing that every action and event is interconnected and influences the course of all things. What is your position? On the web of life because right now we are not in symbiosis in the collective of humanity spiritual adulthood so becoming a and a mature human being is not just biological physical development it is also psychological emotional moral metaphysical and philosophical which all are spiritual aspects that that comprise a human being who understands the foundational framework of the self the natural world and what it means to be a good per good human being what it what it means to be a good person in modern society all of these aspects are deflected, ignored, inverted, occulted, and misguided, which can be observed in the aggregate human condition. Factual. Actually happening. Happening in the realm of the real. You can observe the level of consciousness in the aggregate, the collective of humanity. You could see what topics they are talking about. You could see their actions. We can see the effect of what is going on, the cause. We can see this. We can determine the human condition. And it is clear 
that human beings do not have that foundational information of what it means to be in a spiritual adult, what it means to be a human, what is objective morality, what is nature, what is natural law. They don't know how to function correctly in reality. So we need, we have spiritual currency, right? Paying attention. When you pay attention, you are investing. And the question is, are you going to get a return on your investment? So the most valuable resource in the natural world is your life force energy, your spirit. The saying energy flows where attention goes is the vital currency of a being that can be used for exchange. Intention is the mental marker to direct your currency, current C investment energy or your energy, your inner chi is the generating force for interacting with reality. The true medium of exchange is time and attention, which is comprised of inner assets such as knowledge. Another deceptive um, topic in the modern new age spirituality movement is it's all about your intentions. That is complete bullshit. Intentions is what you intend to do. It is a mental marker. It is a goal for the mind. You're setting the intention. Okay, I, I want to do that. But yet you still have to follow through with the action and perform it in reality. So... Taking immoral actions, but claiming you had the intention for, for moral actions, is completely erroneous, right? Now, intentions, can it, it's, a, it's a tool. It can be utilized. I set my intention for all the points that I want to hit on, in this presentation. I still have to follow through on that. So, of course... I set an intention. What is that? It's the aim. I'm aiming for where? The bullseye, right? And then my spirit, my energy, the inner chi, the inner G, the generating force I'm using, my essence to act in the world. So when we look at the human condition, what is going on, especially in the so-called spiritual communities, where is the, all the energy? And I mentioned earlier on the topics, what are they talking about? What are they focusing on? What are you paying attention to? Where's the investment? Is it on the problem? Is it on the root of the problem? Is it on the, the correct solution? More questions. So, utilizing spiritual currency that obviously has frequency, vibration to it, movement, which is a principle of reality. So paying attention, I want to get into more of the, the meaning of spirituality and 100% it is freedom, the freedom to utilize and express your spiritual currency, your spirit, your energy. What is freedom? Freedom is the state of free will expression without the violation of natural rights. It is the condition of being free, the power to act, speak, or think 
without externally imposed restraints, the emancipation from slavery. So freedom is <clears throat> your inherent based in nature right to express yourself by any means as long as you are not violating another's natural rights. Now, when we take this definition of freedom and we apply it to the world today, are we free? And the question, if you're being honest with yourself and if you paid attention, the answer is absolutely not externally, externally, many, the majority of people are internally enslaved as well, right? We have duress, coercion, the violation of natural rights, murder, rape, taxation, which is theft. All of those are slavery because slavery is a claim of ownership. I claim you, you can't use your currency, your spirit, your expression to perform this. That is a claim of ownership. That is the definition of slavery. But the meaning of life is to achieve true freedom by discovering our sole purpose and by expressing it out into the world, thus contributing to the uplift and the evolutionary growth of humanity and the planet, right? Expanding the web of weird, expanding the spiral of consciousness. That is evolution more expansive, more diverse, more unique. It's artful. It's an expression of art, divine art. So through knowledge, understanding and right action in accordance to the laws of creation is the key to unlock the doors of our enslavement and achieve humanity's purpose of active conscious evolution right? The meaning of life, why we are here, we are here to express and learn and evolve. That's freedom. But yet we are in a state of restraint, of control and duress. We cannot express ourselves freely because we are in a state of slavery. Boom. That is the problem right then and there. It's time to pay attention to that actual problem. That is the root of the problem. Of course, we need to ask why, which we will get into. So life is meaningless if you are enslaved. Does one think just because you have a cage and you have food and quote unquote security, you are free? Absolutely not. You are a slave. No growth there. You will contract on the spiral, the spiritual path of consciousness. No growth there. That's an illusion. We want to evolve. And of course, my last presentation on consciousness, right? I touched on this in more in depth. So that's the meaning of spirituality to understand freedom that's that's for all for human beings the meaning of life is freedom of course you are having your own subjective experience so what you do matters and what you do with that with your life matters right but on the macro looking back looking zooming out the meaning of life is freedom. What is the purpose? Humanity's purpose in the collective, in the aggregate, when we learn that nature never takes anything which is not given and that the cosmic law is based upon giving and re-giving equally, we shall have advanced far towards our spiritual goal. Man's purpose on earth is to build happiness, peace, and goodwill on earth. He can find peace, happiness, and goodwill only as he ceases to build chaos. 
He has been building chaos and expecting this chaos to, to crystallize into unity, which is impossible. The whole universe is purposeful and that each thing must fulfill its purpose. Humanity must find that purposefulness lies in the alignment of natural moral law, not in the direction of chaos, which is rooted in the opposition to nature. So what is humanity's purpose? Our purpose is to end slavery. This is a collective event, a cooperative event, because we are being restricted. The natural world in its whole, the web is being affected in the biosphere as above, so below, as within, so without. If we do not make this our purpose, we will continue down the road of chaos, control, duress, slavery, and it will get worse and worse per the laws of nature. Give and re-give equally. If we, humanity, in the aggregate, we are giving immorality, opposition, ignorance, we are going to get that equally back in the form of chaos, disorder, suffering, pain. It's very simple. Cause and effect. That's the law of attraction right there. So in the aggregate, humanity's purpose. Now, naturally, our purpose is to create peace, happiness, and goodwill on the planet so we can evolve up in the evolutionary process, which we can achieve at some point. But will we achieve that? That's up in the air. That's going to take an act of will. But as of now, in our current situation, we need, what we need is cooperative spiritual anarchy. Cooperative meaning together, in unison, symbiosis, spiritual anarchy. Anarchy meaning no rulers, no masters. That is the true purpose, that, that is our intention. That's what we need to get to. But of course, having that attention can be a total bypass of what is actually going on in the here and now. We need to be grounded in our mind, in our perception. We need honesty of where humanity is in the here and now. Feet on the ground, boots on the ground, spirituality. All right, sovereignty. So we are here. This is our, this is human purpose. You can see this as even an individual human purpose. We are here to master being human and become our sole purpose. Each of us is here to learn and evolve in consciousness into our own unique expression of self-mastery. Your goal is to discover and activate yourself to uplift and inspire humanity to do the same. <clears throat> you are not here to be enslaved, and this is not a prison planet inherently. Oops, put that back on. There we go. I'll say that again. You are not here to be enslaved. And this is not a prison planet inherently. The natural state of this planet is one of freedom. One to promote evolution. 
But of course, to have true freedom is to have the potentiality to fail. It's to have the potential of evil or living in opposition. To live backwards is evil. That potential is always going to be there. We mitigate that through knowledge and through wisdom. So sovereignty is our inherent purpose. Each and every single human being, you are a sovereign, meaning you are above rulership. You own yourself. You are not a slave. But unfortunately, the majority of people are acting like it. They are acting like slaves. They are unconscious and supporting and condoning slavery. Evil is ignorance. So, evil is violating natural rights, condoning and supporting immorality, which the majority of people do, hence the current condition on this planet. Evil is an extreme imbalance whereby the force of involution is dominant over evolution for humanity. Now, involution is a universal force that will always exist, but the extreme polarization of evil absolutely does not need to exist. This does not need this does not mean a that we will have a utopia. The word utopia means nowhere. It's non-existence. It's a fantasy. It means that in a state of true freedom, the potential for evil is always there because that that is what freedom is pure potential in harmony with nature. Humans will have the potential to fail and learn from their failures because this is a realm for learning in consciousness. But that does not mean extreme willful, willful ignorance of the most critical foundational and functional laws of morality in nature. To be ignorant of natural law and morality is to be participating and to be in the vibration and the path of evil because evil backwards is living in opposition to creation, to life, to spirit, to spirituality, true spirituality. You are living backwards and we are all connected. So what you do affects the whole. What I, what I do affects the whole, etc., etc. So, it, it, uh, another example, you can look at it as pain and suffering. Pain is inherent to the natural world, to nature. It's a part of this learning process to experience pain, right? Whether that be, you know, working out to get in shape. Look at childbirth. Painful. Obviously, that pain is for a purpose, that's that's amazing magical there's also pain that harms us from trauma now what's the difference between suffering and pain well by definition suffering is an allowance of an extreme amount of pain so although pain is natural and part of the growing process in nature for human beings and for for animals as well pain is part of the process suffering is a choice where we are most people are unconscious to the reason to the why they are experiencing so much pain that is suffering and you don't have to have suffering we don't have to be dragged through the abyss our children potentially in the future shackled and chained for them to finally realize oh shit we're enslaved that doesn't have to be the way that way that's going to take what we do individuals what individuals do so i know i've 
I know I've talked a lot about the problem already. I'm going to, I'll run through a few of these slides. So the problem, cosmic crimes, the enslavement of the planet is a cosmic crime of the highest order. The culpability lies with those with those performing the actions, meaning the ones actually performing the behavior of violating natural rights, which perpetuates the system of control, coercion, violence, and slavery. These behaviors are completely ignored and or willfully complicit with by the majority of the human family. Their silence is contributing to the problem, which by ignoring the negative, more of that condition will manifest that which we resist will persist per the laws of cosmic moral justice that which we resist will persist so absolutely this this opposition to nature we are in an imbalance too much involution. We keep heading down that plant, that path, then extinction is a possible result. The killing of the planet, potentially, it's a living being. We are all connected. As human beings, we are the stewards of this planet to take care of, entrusted to one's care. That's what stewardship is. And we are doing a horrible job. So those that are performing the action, the police, the military, nurses, teachers, anyone, anyone that is performing the action, look at the needle craft, any, any nurse that performed the action of, you know, injecting needle craft into someone, you're culpable. Because you perform the action, the police and military dropping bombs and killing people right now. It's your fault. You are performing the action. You have the majority of culpability. Now, yes, of course, there is social engineers behind the veil at the top level of the pyramid orchestrating and influencing with their knowledge of natural law. They are influencing these people, but that does not negate the culpability of someone that actually performed the action. So religion, the one and only problem. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, all right. Religion. Now, the, the exoteric, or I should say modern spirituality, the modern New Age, is very much intertwined with what I'm going to talk about. I mean, directly. So, religion, let's do the etymology. It's from the Latin verb religare, meaning to bind, to hold back by tying, to thwart from forward progress. I talked a lot about this in the consciousness presentation. To bind back. Bind back from what? To thwart from forward progress. What's the progress? Evolution. Evolving in consciousness. Becoming a spiritual adult. That's what religion does. Religion is a system of sociological control based in unchallenged, erroneous, and dogmatic belief, which is specifically designed to hold back the progress of human consciousness. The term religion does not merely refer to the belief systems of the cultural religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, etc., Religion, in a wider sense, must be recognized as an active form of mind control placed into human society by social engineers. Religion, in this wider view of the term, includes an array of limiting and controlling belief systems or social structures such as authority, 
government, money, mainstream media, scientism, materialism, solipsism, carnism, nihilism, escapism, hedonism, atheism, atheism, and even spirituality, the exoteric spirituality, and many more. The list goes on and on. Buddhism, all of those. If it thwarts from forward progress, it is in a religion. It is in a religion. It is a cage for your mind. It is a limiter of awareness and perception. All of the cultural and modern religions have some common factors, such as the adherents tend to be very intolerant and destructive to outsiders because they are cults of exclusion. This is very much directed to the cultural religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, right? It's they are cults of exclusion. No, my way is the truth. No, my way is the truth, etc., etc. They all think that they have the path to truth. So another common factor is um, uh, there is an abdication of responsibility, meaning one gives up their obligation and duty to act in the world and to align themselves to truth and morality and natural law. They do not align with nature and are dogmatic. They are belief systems because you need to believe and accept them and not and not actually use logic and reason. They're not based on facts. They are dogmatic. They, they all claim to be the arbiters of truth, reason, and authority. All religions that thwart from forward progress all claim to be the arbiters of truth, reason, and authority. Look at government, the belief in human authority, saying that they are the highest reason or truth or authority and you must obey if not you will be violated look at christians saying that jesus is the way the light the truth etc even buddhism saying it's all about non-attachment like that is the ultimate reason etc you can go on and on now i'm not saying that there are there are, for the cultural religions, there are aspects of, there are aspects of truth in these cultural religions uh, in context to the religious doctrines and ancient texts, but it's 90% deception because that we're talking about a man-made mental construct, 90% um, deception and 10% based in truth which is allegorical, archetypal, metaphorical, metaphysical, and astral theology. But people don't have the eyes and the ears to see and hear that, to discern the information and how it relates to nature and to truth. So all forms of religion are, are what put the human mind in a cage and, keep, and keeps it there. We have to understand that religion, religions have been given to humanity. They are man-made. And what is the reasoning for that? To control the mind. If you control the mind, then you can manage currency. Spiritual currency, energy, spirit. You can manage it because you are influencing, you are influencing someone with incorrect information, and then they are going to act upon that in incorrect information. So you can control humanity. You can control society through mind control. And this is exactly what is going on. How does someone know um, that salvationism? Absolutely, Fred. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. A lot of these religions... There's another common denominator, right? Oh, if I just have enough money, all my, all my problems will go away. Oh, if we just get this person in, in political office, all the problems will go away. Jesus is coming back to save us all, right? 
salvation, salvationism, looking for a savior. That is an abdication of responsibility. Good one. I looked over at the comments. I'm sure there's some really good comments in there. So we got about 70 something people in here. Fantastic. I love it. I hope you guys are enjoying this. So let's talk about another religion that's a uh, predominant and related to the new age spirituality circles and communities. That is solipsism. What is it? Solipsism from derived from Latin solus meaning alone and ipse meaning self. Solipsism is the ideology that only one's own mind is sure to exist. Solipsists, solipsists contend that knowledge of anything outside one's mind is unsure. The external world, including other people and objects, is uncertain or even regarded as illusory. Solipsism poses a radical skepticism about the external reality beyond one's own subjective experience. Solipsism is a diseased religion and a defining hallmark of spiritual infancy and human immaturity. I know I know nothing. One thing, the only thing I know is that I, that I know nothing, right? That's, that's the quote down there. Solipsism is egotism. Me, me, me. It is relativism. One's own mind is the only thing to exist. The only thing that person cares about. This is very much in the, the new age, um, the new age circles. We can look at, and here's the example. Star seeds, indigo child, children. Now, again, you know, I'm not knocking that concept, but the action and the message that is associated with that is what I have a problem with because a lot of the concepts that come with that is that we chose our soul path. We chose this incarnation. So I got to pick out a fucking menu and say, oh yeah, yeah, I want to say, okay, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to experience that type of suffering and oh, okay, pedophilia, child, child rapist. Okay. I guess I got to experience that this go round. You got to be out of your fucking mind that, that people actually believe that it's all about one's own self and that we are just on these spiritual journeys just for simply pleasure and experience of all types of things. That's not how it works. Evil is being committed and we can understand that it's not just an experience. So, uh, moving on, this is where the mental division comes from. There's two categories that we can ca uh, ca categorize, um, you know, in the aggregate for humanity. So the first one is master, master think, two types of thinking. Again, this is a, a I'm building off of my consciousness presentation. The, the first half of it I did in that presentation, this is going to be related to this one. So we have master think, and that is someone that is extremely left brain dominate dominant, meaning that the dominant hemisphere of the brain is, is predominantly firing. This is where they're operating from. And the hallmark characteristics are atheism, scientism, solipsism, moral relativism, social Darwinism, and total totalitarianism. Woo. And on the second half, we have the slave think, which the master think is extremely active and controlling externally wanting to control slave think is the right hemisphere of the brain firing more dominant, and it is extremely passive internal religion unworthiness, self-loathing, addiction, order following, 
and a willfully, willfully slave just following orders. So these two, we can look at in the aggregate of humanity. There's many people are firing in the uh, right brain hemisphere, very dependent on that. And these are the attributes or the left brain. When we think about new age and spirituality nowadays, there's a com combination of both ultimately, right? But we can see that it leans very much to the slave passive side of the brain. Although I would say the modern, I would say, in, you know, the, the seventies, eighties and nineties, that era, it was very much passive. Cultural religions like Buddhism really had a huge uh, influence on that state of mind, which is all about, you know, non-attachment. But nowadays with solipsism and moral relativism, that is also an active form. So we're starting to see a blending. But what do these two have in common? The media, money, the financial institution, institution and diets, malnutrition are forms of mind control. The social engineers are using mind control and their techniques to polarize the public into one of these two camps. Now they both are willfully ignoring reality and they both have cognitive dissidence. This is the parasite, the parasitical class feeding on that currency, that life, life force energy, like a parasite feeding on the public because the public is the population is polarized to one side. And when you're polarized in, in the mental division starts from the mind, then you, you start to get a worldview division as well, meaning how you perceive the world works. So we have random randomness worldview. Everything's a grand accident. There is no underlying intelligence in nature. Natural law does not exist. Existence is purposeless, pur purpose, purposeless. <laughs> Hallmarks of atheism and scientism. That's on the master think side, the left brain dominant. And on the right brain, the passive, it's determinism, meaning everything is already predetermined. God controls every event in creation. All occurrences are preordained. Free will doesn't exist. Change is impossible and action is meaningless. Hallmarks of religious extremism, right? Spirituality, the new age, it's all about the spiritual domains. It doesn't matter what's going on in the physical, what is going on, what actually in truth is going on on the planet, because we're all in our own individual reality, having our own individual soul path. And that's all that matters is that we have good vibes and happiness, selfish happiness. Exactly. There's not a greater purpose to why I'm here, what the meaning of why I'm here, what the purpose of what is going on in the world and what I should do. It's all passive. It's largely focused on the afterlife after I die. Oh, heaven, hell, right? Etc. The astral realm. God's got everything in control. Trust it. What would Jesus do? Jesus has got that. So these are the two overarching worldviews that the majority of people see. It's either randomness, everything's a grand accident, etc., which is highly analytical left brain. And then of course, determinism, God controls every event in creation. No need to take action. Free will doesn't exist. And both of these are polarized and incorrect. 
That's where the social engineers want people. In truth, natural law exists. Natural law is the deterministic component. And we have free will, which is the random component. So in fact, in truth, in reality, it's both random and determined, meaning that we have the free will choice to choose our actions, to make our choice, but absolutely 100% we are not free from the consequences of our actions and our choices. Natural law is going to respond to that. I give an action, I'm going to receive from nature, from the laws of nature, an equal action, reaction. So, oh, let me, oh, sorry. Let me go back to that. Well, oh, well, left, I'll leave that in there. Inversion and obfuscation. The social engineers love a principle, two principles called inversion and obfuscation. They love to take the truth and flip it upside down and propagate that to the public in the educational systems and all throughout society. And they also love to obfuscate words and concept concepts for confusion. Because again, if you don't have the correct information, then how can you make a correct decision? Right? So this is being propagated. So what they call natural is artificial. Simple is complex. Gnosis or knowledge is belief. Principle law, natural law, they have man's law. Dominion, punishment, meaning you have dominion over yourself. You own yourself. Sovereignty, right? But of course, in the, in the uh, social engineer's worldview perspective, you cannot express yourself. You will get punished for your dominion over self. Individuality, groupthink, truth, lies, good, evil, freedom, and slavery. They invert everything. Just as human beings are disconnected from nature, from the rhythm of life right now, is because we are living backwards. We ourselves are in inversion, inverted. And we are in a state of internal confusion because of our ignorance and what we think certain aspects or what the world, how the world operates from our worldview. We think it works a certain way and in reality we are incorrect and that affects our behavior. Inversion and obfuscation. So the mental division, the worldview division, inversion and, obfus and obfuscation obviously leads to delusion and illusion. A lot of ions, which is done intentionally. ION is what? Energy, an ion. That's right. Making you, making you work for your money, for your mon eye, for your currency. What is delusion? Delusion is a false, fixed belief, internal, in the mind. And illusion is misinterpretation misinterpre of external stimuli, which is external, internal and external. Humanity's disconnection from nature truth, knowledge, and objective reality is increasingly evident in modern society. The spiritual community is delusional, false fixed belief on the current condition of consciousness for humanity because they cling to illusionary constructs of mind and religious fervor.
This is due to social conditioning, incorrect parenting, cowardice, and ignorance. Because of the illusions that the spiritual community cling on to, like solipsism, moral relativism, there is no truth. Separation from nature. The savior complex that we are going to be saved from the Galactic Federation, the Blue Avians, the Palladians, whatever it may be. That's the savior complex. I need a savior. Mommy, daddy, come help me. Come save me, please. It's like, come on, we need to fucking grow up. <clears throat> but through that, those false axioms, those fixed beliefs, they are, of course, not acting in the world because they cannot perceive the actual problem, the why of what is going on in the world. So they are inactive. They do not take action. Or they have cowardice. They are not activated in care, in heart. They need to bring, we need to bring the unconscious mind to the surface. Right? Understanding the conscious mind is the awareness of here and now. I have awareness of what I am doing. The unconscious mind is the shadow. It's not about eliminating the shadow, the, the subconscious or the unconscious mind. It's about bringing it to the surface. It's about integrating our ins inconsistencies, our false, false beliefs and our in, uh, erroneous thought forms, bringing that to the surface and looking at ourselves and bringing it to the light of awareness and knowledge and truth. We do that. We are using the ego. The other misconception and deception in the New Age movement is that ego death. You got to kill the ego. Now, sure, ego dominance is a thing. That is left brain master think controlling. There's, but you cannot get rid of the ego. The ego is related to our subjective experience, my vessel, the persona of me, I am will. I know to grab this cup and put it up to my mouth and not my buddy's mouth. So there is no killing the ego, ego death. What we need is knowledge, understanding what the ego is and unifying our self, our essence, our spirit with our physical vessel and the persona attached to that in balance, in harmony. That's what we need. So another polarization and imbalance in the new age movement, one that we can use. And I think people are scared of that. They're scared of the ego. They're scared of the objective fact that you need to take action, that you need to look in the mirror, that you need to shed light on something that is uncomfortable for you stepping out of your discomfort zone in life in any aspect whether that be you know a personal issue a relationship etc like a romantic relationship we need that courage to look to have that self-respect that respect right to look again So spiritual sidelining, many people stay stagnant in a passive state of inaction, the sidelines and never activate actions using false spirituality and as a justification or excuse, typically veiled under the guise of detachment of the material physical plane. Unlock your inner narcissist, right? Discover the hidden power of self obsession using watered down Eastern philosophy and half baked new age pseudo spirituality, right? Again, I've touched a lot on the, the, the passiveness of the spiritual community. 
rooted in ignorance. They do not have the correct information of what is going on. They don't have the correct information of what it means to be a spiritual human adult. Right? So they are in action. But s staying on the sidelines, I also refer that to the people that do know this information. If you understand the problem, the problem, what is going on in reality, that we are enslaved due to our ignorance of objective morality and natural law. And we are going to continue manifesting that until that knowledge is in the minds of the majority and aligned with in our actions. If you know that and you're on the sidelines, you need to take a look again. You need to have self-respect. Ask yourself, why am I not getting on the battlefield and taking action? What you do matters. Another, um, another deceptive new age thing that I've seen a lot of it's really rampant is this notion of, uh, that I am God. You see a spiritual person say, oh my gosh, I had the realization that I am God. I am the creator. Well, I'm here to tell you, you are not God. A notion of modern spirituality is the realization that you are the creator of the universe. This belief is rooted in solipsism and moral relativism. This is a deceptive belief taken from the fact that human beings do have the divine spark of life, which is spirit. So we are imbued with spirit. We have that. This belief, you are the creator in the flesh, is derived from Christianity's Jesus figure. The modern New Age movement is very much repackaged Christianity. New Age religion, same old mind control. So, let me explain this. Of course, we are endowed with spirit, with life, with the divine spark, because we are alive. That's the evidence right there. You are alive. The animated force is inside you. You can see in the natural world, everything in the natural world is alive, is endowed and imbued with spirit. But that does not make you the creator of all. What it does mean is that you are having an experience in an objective reality to learn how to lower entropy, learn how to work your way up the staircase back towards those higher levels of consciousness, maybe eventually to godlike consciousness or source consciousness. But this notion that you are God and that you're accessing multiple dimensions and you're not even living in the, th the 3D reality is complete, utter bullshit. That is solipsism, moral, moral relativism, and an abdication of responsibility and what is actually going on in truth, in reality. It's not grounded in the here and now. That's the problem. It's not grounded. So let me touch on the word God. Where does God come from? The etymology. Well, it's Proto-Indo-European, got, which, which means that which is invoked. That's what the word, the etymology is. Or potentially from Sanskrit, um, gyo, gya, gya. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. It means to call or invoke the same thing. So think about that. You could ponder on that very much. When someone says, I'm God, or they mention, or I'm, I'm praying to God, they are invoking. What are they invoking? Well, I would say anything, whatever they think is God. Whether that be a cultural religion, money, Government, 
Donald Trump. Yeah, people worship him like a god, like he's the second coming of Christ. Come on, come on now, delusion and illusion. Come on. So that's a little, you know, something to think about, that word God. So, but what ultimately, when one thinks that they are God, it means that they don't have to take responsibility. They have a lack of correct action because it's all about their experience, right? Solipsism. So lack of correct action. Unfortunately, the so-called spiritual movement is not evolving towards holistic consciousness and true freedom due to their ignorance of natural law and objective morality. They are intentionally stagnant and stuck within the liminal space due to incorrect knowledge and the lack of, and the lack of processing of the transitional phase, right? Liminal. The liminal space means the in-between. If I'm in my studio and I'm walking to my bedroom, the hallway is the liminal space. The liminal space is where the work is done. If I'm sitting in my studio and my intention is to be in my bedroom, I have to physically walk through the hallway, the in-between, before I'm actually in my bedroom. That's a metaphor. That's the liminal space. So they, they are stuck in that liminal space, meaning they, they have the awareness potentially of the causal factors of what is going on in reality. They want to take action. They have the intention, but they're not activated. That's because they have not done the internal work in the liminal space of figuring out what the roadblocks, the blockers in the mind are there that are hindering them. Eliminating the, the religions that are tying them back from forward progress. In short, ignorance of true spirituality will thwart forward progress of evolution in nature. In the spiritual movement, movement mean, meaning you're going somewhere or, or freedom movement or truth movement, right? Movement means you're going somewhere like what? Like a spiral around coiling around a fixed point, a fixed center, except the freedom and truth and spiritual movements are way the fuck on the outside in the exoteric. They're not getting... They're not moving towards the dot, to the cause, to the truth of spirituality, of what is freedom, etc. So, let me get this one ready. We need to realize, brothers and sisters, my relatives, it's a Native American saying. Um, many Native American tribes, th this is how they refer to all life as relatives, plants, rocks, animals, other human beings. You're my relative. We are related because we are in a relationship via spirit and creation. And what are our relations, etc. Oh, what'd I do? Okay. One second. So this next slide, we're, uh, we're getting, you know, we're on the home stretch. Got about 15 more slides. Hmm. Just got to drink some water real quick. So we're getting, talking about the problem, lack of correct action. Now, if you haven't got the memo, 
I'm here to tell you that we are at war. We underlined all of us, all human beings, animals, the plants, the minerals, the planet. We are at war. A spiritual war for souls. That's what this war is. A spiritual war for souls. You can look at soul as when we're taking that journey to evolve in consciousness. This is the path of our spiral where we are evolving through the lifetimes. And that occurs vast amount of spiritual, of spirit of energy, of life force that we all have. The social engineers, that's the currency that they feed off of. They want to stunt that soul path of people. And they want to feed off that energy, that louche that it is emitting, that involution. It's because they want to be they want to play God on planet Earth. That's what they want to do. They understand natural law exists. They know they're not above natural law. This is why they influence. They influence the masses and they get the ignorant masses to actually perform the action. It bypasses the culpability from them. So the solution, the soul solution, soul you ion, right? This is talking about individuated. That's what the soul is, the indivi in individuated unit of consciousness, you, me, everyone else. And then the ion, the energy that you are going to put from your soul. We need to understand real quick, uh, understanding causes right? The plane of effects and the plane of causality. So what we call the material plane, the physical realm, this is the plane of effects. This is the manifested reality, which formed because of their causes. Now there's no change in the manifested reality because it already manifested. It's here. The plane of causality is the why that underlies and precedes manifestation. The plane of causality is the metaphysical dimension, realm, mental, mind. Everything is mental. This is where it stems from. This is where it starts, starts from the mind. Your, your mind instructs the heart, the emotions direct compass, direct the energy and your actions construct. <clears throat> so we need to understand that to affect any change at all, it must be in the metaphysical causal realm of mind. Now, again, this is a system that works together. We can talk about them for as a description and an explanation to understand ourselves and understand the cause, the why of the enslavement of humanity, the why the inaction in the spiritual movement. And it always, it is always rooted in the mind, which I explained earlier in the problem the worldviews, the ignorance, the polarization. So if we need to, if we need to affect change in the world, it has to start at the, the metaphysical plane of causality, meaning that we need to influence people, influence their minds. This is what my goal, this is what I'm doing now. I'm using my creative, I'm using my spirit, my creative essence to express artwork. This is art that I'm doing. Art is creative expression. 
I'm using that creative essence to convey and deliver information and a message in two hopes to educate viewers to inspire viewers to look again to look deeper not to believe me but to motivate you to, to motivate you and and research more and look into it more to hopefully activate internally yourself to take action in the external world so this is how it works state of mind this is the co-creation roadmap where is humanity going that's how we're going to affect change, right? We need to understand, like I said earlier, the web of weird. Everything's connected. Human beings, what we are each a co-create a co-creator, right? Meaning we each have the capability to create, not reality, but to create, meaning to build and influence our environment. Then the 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 collective, the totality of that currently is what we call the aggregate or the collective and then what is the condition of that so where is humanity going well if we first oh man i don't know why i did that let me um darn it let me see if i can Hold on guys. Let me um Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Sorry about that. I had some Let me see. Let me take out Oh. Sorry, I had some transitions that kind of bled over. Ah. Darn it. Hold on. Sorry, guys. One second. Man, they all came over. Come on. That off. All right. Okay. Man, that created a Window capture. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. About oh, just about ready. It it messed up my uh, OBS as well. I had to go back and fix. Let me see. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna have to. There we go. So co-creation uh, roadmap. Now, if we start from that first principle of mind, right? The gener the inner G, the inner Chi. The G stands for even in Freemasonry. This the G stands for generative, generating, generation, genesis, etc. Many meanings, but that G stands for the generating principle attribute and if that is fear which is ignorance the absence of love or the contracting aspect of consciousness if you start from that which all fear right is based in ignorance the unknowing fear of the unknown now that fear is going to so funny it's going to lead to cowardice and inaction which will lead to obedience conformity or inaction which is the emotion 
and then the action is going to get slavery. Stagnation, involution, and chaos. All right, let, let, me, let me try to... So if we, if we have fear in society, if we have ignorance, the absence of care and morality, and we are in discourse and duress, of course, that's the state of mind. The e emotion is going to be obedience and conformity and inaction. And that's going to lead externally as um, slavery, stagnation, involution, and chaos and disorder. Now, if we have love, love is such a broad term nowadays, right? What do I mean by love? I mean knowledge, truth, wisdom. That's the absence of fear. It's expansive. That's the mental generated attribute, which will lead to responsibility. S responsibility, courage, diversity, and right action. Which externally in society is going to give us freedom. So the more people which freedom is creation, um, evolution, and order. So right now, we are in the state of slavery, chaos, involution, duress, violence, is because of, back to the first generating attribute of fear, of ignorance. That is why. And that will grow all the way into slavery, the condition we currently have. So to... Ch to increase change on the causal level in, in the realm of mind, we need correct knowledge, gnosis. Knowledge is based, true knowledge is based in truth because you know the why. You know the problem and how to implement the solution. When you have that knowledge, you have that responsibility and you know, if I understand the current human condition, I have a moral obligation to act right action the more people do that then we are on the pathway on the road to freedom so first you must get mad the em emotion of anger is a vital and relevant force that can that can be a great activator and transmuted towards motivation to act when there are profound injustices occurring in reality the new age deception of oh don't get angry never get angry at anything don't focus on the negative oh that person is angry cringe it makes you feel icky right that's bullshit because of this quote right here. St. Tom Thomas Aquinas. He who is not angry when there is just cause, just cause for anger is immoral. Why? Because anger looks to the good of justice. And if you can live amid injustice without anger, you are immoral as well as unjust. I am not talking about petty anger. Oh, this, per this person cut me off or whatever. I'm talking about righteous anger. Children are being violated. Humanity is being violated. The enslavement of the species and the planet. The ignorance of how to truly act in the world. The ignorance to morality and natural law and what true freedom is. That should piss you off. It should make you mad. Now, of course, anger is the element of fire and fire can be honed and you can utilize that and transmute it as a motivational force, but it still has to be transmuted. You still need to act, harness and then act. So what we sacrifice today will fall. What we sacrifice today will fall tenfold on our children and grandchildren. What efforts have you given towards freedom? Ask yourself. 
actions actualize. And the effects will no doubt ripple through generations to come. If you are standing by with idle hands, then know this. You are currently on the wrong side of history. If you are complicit, if you are idle, if you are stuck, if you are sidelining, that energy, that spirit of that, of you, is adding to the destruction or the 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 invo the involution of humanity and all beings it is supporting the parasitical condition of the world versus symbiosis actions actual actualize right in reality our actions perform the energy that construct what is happening. Cause and effect. Cause the mind, the state of mind. And then we perform the actions, which creates a cause and effect as well. If we act in the world, if it's immoral, that's a violation. That's adding to the condition of slavery. If we act morally, then we are in alignment with creation. Let me stick this right here. Still got a steady flow, about 78 people looking great. Hope you guys are having a good time and, and getting great value out of, uh, out of this investment. All right. Getting close to the end y'all. And then we're going to do an open discussion. So, Going back to that, what we sacrifice today, keyword sacrifice, this reality in nature, everything sacrifices, everything. What is sacrifice? From the Latin, sacara, meaning sacred, and from the Latin, fa facere, to make, to do. So meaning the offering of something sacred. Giving up something sacred. Well, what is sacred? I would say for the individual, your energy, your spirit is sacred. Is of creation, is sacred. Everyone viewing right now is sacrificing their time and attention to watch this presentation. And I'm sacrificing as well. Everything is, has this certain transaction, right? Currency, transaction. Sacrifice is giving your time and attention and action towards a goal. Sacrifice, which is the exchange of energy, can be done as a free will choice, consciously, or a conditioned response, unconsciously. Either way, there will be, there will be a giving and a receiving. If you say you want something, energy is required. Sacrifice is required if you say you want something. Napoleon Hill, great achievement is born of great sacrifice and is never the result of selfishness. This time period right now, we are celebrating, I'm, I'm celebrating, everyone should be celebrating spring, the season of life, where we can sacrifice so we can give reverence and offerings. Of course, the cultural religions, you know, they, they, they want to promote that separation of nature and individual and humanity, right? So this is looked at as a pagan way of life. So we all sacrifice any, we all sacrifice. Now, if we want to create change, if we want to end the condition of slavery, we're going to need a, a lot of sacrifice, a lot. 
We're sacrificing potential endeavors that one may have hoped they could pursue in this life. But they recognize the moral obligation and the duty to resist and to activate within the spiritual war. That's what a, that's what a spiritual warrior is. A warrior means you're at war with something. Well, what are you at war with? You're at war with deception, lies. You're at war with yourself for the erroneous belief systems, the inconsistencies, the lies you tell yourself that keep you, that thwart from forward progress. The religions. You're at war with the social engineers for the people that are ignorant and that are causing harm. Now, do I mean go out and and take physical kinetic action. We're not there yet. That time will come. Right now we have the opportunity. To. Use the digital platform. To influence. Minds. To. Affect change. In other ways. Before we get to that stage. So. Sacrifice. We need to make. The conscience, free will choice, right? Not the conditioned response. People think of energy vampires. Energy vampires, what people are are unconscious of, they are unconscious to the cause of an energy vampire. They are unconscious to the cause of their own sacrifice. They are giving their energy to something and they're unknowing. They do not know they're doing that. Everything is a give and take, a give and receive. Everything in nature, amongst all life. So they are getting drained of their life force, getting drained. That's because they are unconscious to the sacrifice that they are making. So we need education of causal factors. And we need to activate our free will. Learn the ways of universal law of cause and effect as we break the law. So do we lose our freedom, recognize your free will, realize your free will, know your free will, use your free will in harmony with universal will and be free. This is an ancient hermetic quote. This is about, we are endowed with willpower. Free will, which is the active force of spirit that allows us to choose our decisions. And we need to choose to fight this war. So I'm going to use an analogy, the acorn and the oak. An acorn and the oak tree are genetically identical. But you cannot get lumber from an acorn. Why? That's the question, right? An acorn and an oak tree, an oak tree are genetically identical, but you cannot get lumber from an acorn. Why? That's the question. This is very relevant to free will and activation. I'm doing this as an allegory, an observation in nature. So the acorn. <clears throat> Excuse me. The acorn and the oak tree. The acorn itself is pure potentiality. Potentiality is when something contains the ingredients to become something else. <clears throat> Meaning, humanity has. All the ingredients inside, spirit, higher order, thought function, consciousness, all the ingredients to evolve, to become something else, to activate. What what is that process that activates the acorn into the oak tree? The oak tree is actuality. So from potentiality to actuality, 
Actuality is when an object fulfills its potential and becomes something else. So what is for an individual to activate and to step on that battlefield to help influence change and create change? It needs to fulfill its potential. The innate gift of free will is potential, but actualizing in reality is an act of willpower. Thoughts, emotion, lead to action. That's the order. Potentiality is thoughts and emotions, the internal aspect, just like the acorn with all its ingredients inside, internally, in its seed. And then under the right conditions, once it fills its potential, boom, the spirit activates and the will of that acorn and creation ignites and sets roots. Same thing with a human being. Aligning our thoughts and emotions with truth and natural law and morality. So as I think, potentiality is something, yep. So as I think, so I feel, and so I act, which leads to actuality. Actuality is when an object fulfills its potential and becomes something else. Something what? An activated human being aligning their thoughts, emotions, and actions to natural law. And they're fighting within this war because they have the correct diagnosis, the correct knowledge of what is actually going on. And then they are acting on it from their care. So the thought is the knowledge, the awareness, the, the information, the, the correct knowledge. The emotion is the care. And the action is actually constructing and performing in the world, sitting at the computer, writing presentations for educational purposes out in the world, doing that, that free will and activation. A lot of people are stuck. Like I said earlier in the liminal space in the middle, they're stuck there and they don't know why that's because they have not fulfilled their potentiality. They have not activated and mo and nine out of 10 times. It's going to be in, in the thought, in the thought. It's always going to start in the thought, but there can be emotional hangups as well. Em emotional heart control as well, but it's your job to figure that out your responsibility. So preformed energy, karma. We're getting close to the end, y'all. We can't, you know, we're talking about spirituality. We got to, we got to touch on karma. We already have, it's called natural law, but the word karma etymologically derives from Sanskrit and it means action. That's exactly what the etymology, the definition of the word, it means action. It refers to the law of cause and effect, stating that every action has consequences. Positive actions lead to positive outcomes while negative actions lead to negative outcomes. Karma also implies that these consequences may not only affect the current life, but also the collective of the spiritual domain. It emphasizes personal responsibility and accountability in life. Karma is energy, performed energy, but it builds up. It's not instant. Oh, I stole a wallet. I walk outside five minutes later, I get hit by a car. That's not karma. In certain cases that could work. It depends. There's a lot of factors on what it is, the, in, the environmental influences, who you're doing it to, etc. But karma itself, action, act, ion, performed energy is energy building up in a flow, in a rhythm. We need to understand the condition of humanity. It's on a delay. We society can act immorally and then we slowly enslave ourselves. So if we are going to create change, 
and we get people activated to create change and you have an expectation that you're going to think you're going to see true freedom in your lifetime, that is an illusionary expectation because it's going to take maybe many lifetimes or many generations. But the fact remains, the truth remains that it is the right thing to do to engage and activate. But karma, yes, karma on an individual life, yes, but it occurs over lifetimes in a rhythm. Karma in the aggregate, this is the law of freedom. As any given society acts immorally, they will become enslaved. As any given society in the aggregate becomes moral, then they will then slavery will decrease and, and freedom will increase the law of freedom. What about Dharma? Both of the uh, karma and Dharma. Yes, they're both from Hinduism, right? Taking an aspect of religion, uh, um, of spiritual practice. Um, Dharma in Hinduism, it refers to the moral and ethical duties and responsibilities that an individual must fulfill in life. It also encompasses righteousness, natural law, order, and truth. In Buddhism, Dharma can refer to the teachings of the Buddha as well as the natural law or universal truth that governs the universe. In, uh, in Jainism, it refers to the path of righteousness and the moral code that guides one's conduct. Overall, Dharma is about living in harmony with the natural order and filling, fulfilling one's obligations and duties. Dharma is moral right action. That's what it is. I am pursuing my Dharma by trying to educate the public to influence and create change. I am on my Dharmic path. So that means responsibility. Owning responsibility means you understand the non-aggression principle. You owe all you owe others one thing. Do not initiate harm. Every wrong behavior is a form of theft. Do not steal. Steal. And then of course, if you are aggressed upon, transgressed upon, you have the right to of self-defense. If violated, you have the right to stop the harm by force by any means necessary with discernment. And of course, understanding non-aggression and self def self defense you understand first principles of self ownership meaning that you have possession and control and usage of your body you are responsible for your actions responsibility is your ability to respond so that's what we need we need to understand our responsibility and we also need healing right spiritual healing for balance and holistic well-being encompasses a journey towards harmony of mind body and spirit it involves nurturing and a deep connection with oneself and the universe recognize the interdependence of all aspects of existence through practices such as meditation, mindfulness, and energy work, individuals seek to restore equilibrium by aligning oneself to the natural flow of life. This healing process is continuous and is required during a state of violence, duress, and dis-ease. Healing means becoming whole, not you have became whole. You are on the path of becoming whole, holistic in a state of slavery where for thousands of years of generational mind control, we have all had trauma. We have all had mind control instilled programming and conditioning instilled. It is part of the healing journey to heal ourselves from these erroneous 
traumatic experiences, but understanding that our responsibility for ourselves as adults, as spiritual adults, we need to have that awareness that as we progress in this war and in this battle, healing will be continual. So take care of yourself, care for yourself. Be, be wise where you invest your spiritual currency. The divine connection. Becoming a holistic spiritual adult recognizes the laws of nature as the only true law in reality. Of course, government is bullshit, is illegitimate. Right? Natural law is a supreme authority which is immutable, non man made, universal, and binding to all human beings. And of course, the meaning of life is freedom. So, what is your relationship to natural law, to nature itself? Reverence, exchange of energy. What is the connection? The only solution is a spiritual soul you shun. Individuals becoming truly enlightened regarded regarding objective morality and natural law first, then teaching it publicly. An individual means non-divisible, non-divided. The word individual means non-divided. Thus, action or inaction of a person will add to the whole, the whole of slavery or the endeavor of freedom. The consequences are inevitable. You either contribute to the ending of slavery or you're complying to slavery. The choice, as always, is yours. The real twin flames, the true will and true care. Again, ask yourself, what do you truly care about? Care is the generative principle, the generating life force, your energy that is driving the driving force behind your actions. When the mind and heart are in alignment and not in contradiction, this is unity consciousness. I touched on this in my last presentation. The true will and the true care, as I think, so I feel, and so I act in harmony with nature, fixed on that point, that fixed center of truth. My relatives... You are a living mystery school. It is time to begin the process of dismantling and distilling the false ideologies that, that are immoral and in opposition to nature and truth. The first step is being brutally honest with yourself on all levels. This is a stepwise progression, of course, of course, correction. Just as there are no right angles in nature, there are no sudden curves or fixes in this journey of self-discovery. The spiral ritual is a path of willpower, courage, integrity, care, justice, and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis will determine the whole, the condition. Embrace psychological death of oneself. Like the phoenix rising from its ashes, you too must rise from the stagnant beliefs and awaken to your true self. This process is continuous and change is continual and the consequences for all choices are inevitable. This is your responsibility to begin the spiritual journey. If you know, you know. If you care, you do. And if you don't, you'll be sacrificed. From the social engineers, they will take advantage of you, suck your life force energy out.
So my friends, my relatives, my spiritual relatives, that was part one of my presentation. Part two, I'm going to dive into a, another category of animism and what that means and the true and accurate perception of what animism is related to the natural world. There's so much misinformation about what animism is in general and the practices that go along with that and how animism itself, that worldview, that shift in perspective will absolutely aid in this spiritual war and this endeavor for true freedom, morality, and symbiosis. So again, my name is Will Keller. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you found value. Uh, it was a, a long one, I know, but uh, now let's uh, let's get to let's go ahead and get to the open discussion. Again, thank you so much for your time and attention. Let me put the uh, the link. There we go. Let me get the uh, the link in the chat. And then give me some feedback. You know, if you want to come on here and give some constructive criticism, give me some feedback on the presentation. Let me know. Um, I I do appreciate it. The pat the uh, link to join will be in the chats as of now. Link to. Oops. You can join audio, just audio or video. It's, it's up to you. And, um, give me one second. Um, I'm going to use the restroom. I'm gonna take a week, a wiki leak. It'll take me just one minute. I will play fantastic musician, Joe Murray. For more the heartache and pain and dwelling in the darkness till something sparked in my brain and it was plain to see the world was blind by the way it was trained to see and my hunger to see the truth brought about the change in me and amazingly I saw the light and now we were all sold alive separated and segregated all the fight and that there's more to life than what you perceive but if it's stuck in what you believe then you'll always be reluctant to see and what you put out is what you retrieve and if the thoughts are wrong our behaviors will be and what we'll receive is a whole plane of struggling suffering from greed sucker to believe that we must surrender our liberty just to be free, but subsequently we see the opposite, and it's time to accept the consequences of the reflection of our collective consciousness, so drop the nonsense of the walls that got your mind to prison it's time to rise, my people, sky's the limit Sense to me that this wasn't the way shit was meant to be My whole life all I wanted was for the rest to see Your destiny's not to land exceptional 9 to 5 Strive to consume happiness You'll eventually die Trying to buy the bottom by the fault lines of race and religion Which makes us imprisoned in this matrix It slaves to the system It's time to make a decision We're at a fork in the road How much more can we go? No more Looking back at a fall that I came from all the heartache and pain.
pain and dwelling in the darkness till something sparked in my brain and it was plain to see the world was blind by the way it was trained to see and my hunger to see the truth brought about the change in me and amazingly I saw the light and now we were all sold the lies separated and segregated all the fight and that there's more to life than what you perceive but if it's stuck in what you believe then you'll always be reluctant to see and what you put out is what you retrieve and if the thoughts are wrong our behaviors will be and what we'll receive is a whole plane of struggling suffering from greed sucking to believe that we must surrender our liberties just to be free but subsequently we see the opposite and it's time to accept the consequences of the reflection of our collective consciousness so drop the nonsense on the walls that got your mind to prison it's time to rise my people sky's the limit All right, all right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. We got my uh, my brother Logan. Let's go ahead and bring him on in here. Get a little discussion going. Add to the stage. Oh, there we go. Yeah, buddy. What's, What's up, up brother? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Yeah. What a what another masterpiece you just put together there, man. Ah, thanks, brother. That means Absolutely. a lot, man. For coming from you, that, that means a lot. It yeah. was a long one. Yes, it was. Um, and, and that was like, I had the other half of that, which it was going to be its own presentation as well. But um, I had to take, you know, split it up this presentation had to been split up because it just got so massive. I guess that's what happens when you give yourself a little more time to work on something. I mean, it grows. This is the topic, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to fit it all into one session. Yeah. You know, and I think so much it, to unpack there something that, that I could I could say that I, I should have said it on the outro of it. You know, remember I, I'm, I focus, I wanted to focus on the meaning and purpose getting to that bullseye. What does it mean to aim for that bullseye? Of course, when we talk about spiritual practices, I mean, and there's many pathways up the mountain, but the mountain is still there, right? So that that's important. What, what, you know, daily practices, breath work, energy work, meditation, contemplation, concentration, Right. There's so much emphasis on actual meditation when people don't even know that all that means is bring to the middle, bring to the center. I think meditation has been actually used for deception because mm. there's a lot of people that don't need meditation. You don't need to what they call quiet the mind. You need to engage the mind. You need concentration and focus and contemplation. That's what that's what introspection is. It's to engage the mind, to fire it up cuz so many people are passive on it. So yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, I love it, man. There's yeah, already so many so many different directions. Um but but on the meditation aspect, there are two kinds of meditation that that a lot of people are not aware of. They think of like, oh, empty your mind, you know, it's the very like Yoda kind of esque version of that but there is intero interoceptive and exteroceptive mm. meditations uh andrew huberman talks about this is where is the focus going and that is going to determine where is your natural focus and then where do you need to counterbalance that and um yes the the typical thought of Meditation is very much the interoceptive, just empty yourself, uh, think nothing, do nothing, um, you know, which is uh, kind of the more feminine modality, I, yes. you know, which is no accident. This is the new age way to kind of, you know, uh, demasculize the masculine and bring, you know, Typically, men that are involved in that area tend to to kind of get steered away from their masculine energy uh, through these practices, 
you know, um, another thing I've been really drilling down on is as a, as a practitioner and studier of magic, Mm. there is a masculine and feminine version of magic. And the feminine version is what is taught in the, like the secret, you know, the, uh, law of attraction and these kind of things of like feminine magnetism and a de-emphasis of action right exactly both are valid but it depends on who you are and where your power is as an individual and that's important to to know thyself and to you know show up as you (laughs) dude yeah 100 percent. and that's where the polarization comes in because when you're polarized you're 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 obviously that has an effect that has that has a huge effect i like what you talked about the the book the secret by rhonda burns right i i got into that that documentary and all the books and stuff like that uh but it was very it's very much just focused on magnetism it's like a sliver of natural law and how tr- the real law of attraction actually works and and yes missing the active the will the willpower that's in there, the action that must be, uh, performed. So there's no, you know, there's no reason why they want men to be in their opposite polarization, right? Because I mean, when you're at war, the first thing you have to do is declaw, de de, uh, you know, neuter and defang D ball (laughs) and D ball the men. Because the men, protectors, the active, um, you know, kinetic acting um, and constructing in the world. So, of course, I mean, there's no there's a, there's a rhyme and a reason to what they're doing. It's very much related to energy uh, and polarization. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to touch on something, too, whether you intended this or not. But I dropped in the comments when you first started the meaning and purpose is the masculine and feminine aspects of spirituality. Exactly. The the meaning is the intrinsic essence, which is the feminine, the beingness and the purpose is the application through action. Exactly. It's the masculine. That's beautiful. Yep. You, you, you just did an excerpt from part two presentation. Uh, it's perfect. Sorry, sorry no, to no. Give, give it away, man. Oh no, dude, dude. That's the thing. This, like, what you what you just mentioned, and what I said that I'm gonna mention, other people know. It's observable in nature. You, it, this is truth. This is not like, oh, I I developed the concept and this is what it is. We are recognizing what is in nature, and that very much meaning and purpose. I touched mm-hmm. on this in my return to nature presentation that is the macro um you know divine feminine and and divine masculine meaning Love and it. purpose we have this on the collective sense of humanity our human species meaning and purpose and also on the individual meaning yeah. and purpose yeah it makes me think of the concept of the tool which is to me one of the most spiritual concepts that there is A tool is something Mm. that, you know, uh, brings it's a it's a magical device. It brings about a certain outcome that can be utilized by an a a conscious user, you know, and um, a tool has a meaning and a purpose. Absolutely. Same, Same kind of thing. There's what it is and then what it's used for, just like consciousness itself and the human being and the body and existence 100 percent, dude these are all tools i think it the, the concept of the tool is so underrated i don't hear people talking about this a lot but to me it's so central to understanding just the dynamics you, of everything this is what the human this is what the the body the vessel is It's a tool for us to, to experience, learn and grow, right? Consciousness. We're using this vessel. Um, and 
all all other things. I mean, this is the problem even with modern spirituality in the new age, right? They want to be they they don't they think that technology like computer tech and this kind of stuff isn't part of the solution, right? They want to move away from that. When I absolutely see that we need to understand the tech, we need to see it and educate ourselves that it is a tool and it can be used by the wheel the wielder. That all depends on how we use it. Especially if we're trying to create change in the world. Right. And and then taking it beyond the physical. Tools can be metaphysical. They can be conceptual ideas. Every this is what I'm saying. Everything in existence can be a tool because what is reality? It is the immersive experience to develop your consciousness. So everything within reality is a tool with that purpose, taking mm. it back to purpose. It is something that is here to advance you if you know how to use it. Of course, you have to know how to use a tool properly. Uh, and that's what, you know, consciousness and intelligence is all about, right? You could hand a highly sophisticated tool to a moron and they just be like, oh, what's this? Like, does, it's not going to do them a lot of good because they don't know how to, how to actually utilize that. So my point is that, you know, everything is a tool or at least has the capacity to be a tool. Every thought, every belief every object um every experience you know um, um a pathway right mm -hmm. like a hobby you know get like me playing the guitar the guitar is a tool i can learn so much about natural law about myself about magic just through that one thing that's yeah. what i love about that Absolutely, man. Dude, well said. Um, I remembered what I wanted to talk about, and, and I was hoping you were coming on here. Let's talk about <clears throat> the season of sacrifice. Um, it is spring. So, Ostara blessings, um, uh, vernal equinox. This time period, I want to talk about, um, you know, what is it primed for? The social engineers obviously utilize the energy that is or this rhythm of energy that we are in i think i got some uh actually let me pull up i had a couple slides so march 20th it's usually the three days before spring is the um is the build up up to the season of sacrifice and let me go ahead and let me just upload those right here. Show some people. So what it, what is the, the season of sacrifice? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I said the, the three days leading up. Sure, the energy does build up and it's continuum building in in a you know a um a gradual sense. But the season of sacrifice. Um, on the third day after the spring equinox, the sun breaks past the equator and fully emerges from its, its tomb, right? Tomb meaning the southern hemisphere, meaning the season of death or winter. This represents the sun rising from the dead and begins its journey towards its highest, highest power at the summer solstice, right? So in... Let me go ahead and in uh, in sun worshiping traditions, there were sacrifices in the ancients, animal sacrifices. It's the spilling of blood, right? They would put this in their crops when they were planting, um, when they were planting, sowing the fields. This is what they did. Why did they do that? And I'm not saying that's right, but I'm just telling you what happened. And we're gonna dive more into it. It happens because the energy is in the blood. The life force is seen in the blood. The water, if you've seen my water presentation, people, the water is in the blood. So 
This is what they would do. It was an offering, offering a sacrifice, a giving of something sacred like blood. Now, of course, there's many ways to give energy off than sacrificing an animal or your own blood or whatever may be. The social engineers, they still believe in this, this old religion of, of bloodletting. And they create uh, they've influenced, they've pulled off all these events during this time period. Let me pull up some of the dates of during this time. And I don't want to, I, this is my favorite time period of just the energy. It's spring. I love spring. So although I'm saying the season of sacrifice, there's a light and a dark for that. The season of sacrifice is when you are giving your energy. It's the seeds that you are sowing, whether that be mentally, physically, right, in your garden, uh, but mentally, the mental seeds that you sow so that later on in, in the season of harvest, you're going to reap what you have sown. Uh, it's the energy. It's the natural energies in this time period didn't load up here it goes so the season of sacrifice blood rituals and dates you got the uh, battle of lexington and concord april 19th so when is the season of sacrifice it is march march 19th all the way up to uh may 1st may day mm, yeah Um, so here's some of the dates. I'll, I'll leave that up there just for a quick moment. And again, this is this is actually Mark's slide. There's probably been tons more. Yeah. Yep. Spring equinox. Some big events in there, man. Yeah. Columbine. Heaven's Port Gate. Arthur. Cult suicide. Yeah. Heaven's Gate. Those are the two I was looking at. Waco. I was born in Waco, man. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> huh. B BP oil spill. Yeah, so you know um it's like why do they do that this time of year? And here this is what I want to say. This time of the year, the the natural section for us. Uh, of course, you know, in in the northern hemisphere, it's obviously fall on the other side of the planet southern hemisphere um but in the spring the western world this is the time of fertilization the animals are coming out they're mating the energy is one of uh of fertile grounds Fertility. for the substrate yeah. yeah our consciousness is actually coming out of winter in, in into new beginnings into life it's activating it's coming online they do these inverted dates or these inverted uh you know blood rituals psyops false flags during this time at to disrupt to cause trauma on the human beings on the natural rhythm of life to fertile, create a disassociation fertile mind that's right for for the mind control the trauma-based mind control but that is that wow. is the inversion it doesn't have to be you know it's as above so below it's correspondence it's not just about nature being fertile for the spring season it is spiritual mental fertility and you can take advantage of that just as these twisted fucks are doing that you can sacrifice you can plant seeds you can sow, you know, uh, and, and prepare for the the common harvest for yourself. That's empowerment. Exactly, dude. You nailed it. I love it. I love how you said fertile for the mind, right? It's like yes. it, it it's it's stepping into the slipstream of of nature, of consciousness, right? On the on the, the planetary um um celestial being the energy that flows i call it the rhythm of life it's like 
you wouldn't want to wait and then all of a sudden start to plant corn, you know, at the end of the year. You're like, oh, shit, you missed out on the time period when it was most fertile to plant. So there's a rhyme and a reason in the nat external natural world that world that we can observe and see. And that influence that influences us internally, mental, emotional as well. So, yeah, you nailed it. I love it. And. You know, in my presentation, I was speaking of the, the, the principle of inversion and obfuscation. This is the same thing, right? It's fertile for mind control. It's like the opposite of what people are doing. You, I mean, we should be planting for, for life, right? For sustenance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm talking mentally, right? So, um, and, and physically planting, gardening and, and all this kind of stuff. They, they kind of poison it from all angles. Um, but that that creates uh, dis-ease for human beings. Um, I would love to grow my own food. It's hard when the soil is so uh, alkaline and the metals or you know the foods are poison and this kind of shit. So there's these direct attacks that they are doing, and you know we have to do what humans can do and that's adapt and pivot and create. So in this time of sowing seeds, that could mean planting seeds in the mind for, you know, doing education. I think it's a fertile time for people to really activate, take in this information and activate and get on the battlefield in some form or fashion, even if that's just a phone in your hand. I mean, you got to start somewhere. You, it's like you have to, ch you have to choose your zero point. My zero point was in my garage, hopping on Zoom and chatting with like-minded individuals like yourself, Logan. There, there's my zero point. That's how I started, and then from there, I evolved. So, yeah, when when you come to understand the true cycles of nature the the forces of nature the energies when you see what they're doing it's a fucking joke yeah and and the power is always with you that's why i'm saying it's not their season of sacrifice they're nothing dude they're they're imposters they're hacks that's what they are exactly dude you have the power to tap into nature itself they can't do that and actually bring about your own harvest in your own life empowerment that's what it's all about exactly man well well said we need i think a lot of people especially in the so-called freedom movement or spiritual com um, community movement or whatever i shouldn't even use movement because it, it, it's all over the place it's scattered um so circles that's that's a better term because what does a circle do just revolves Jerk. circle jerks <laughs> exactly <laughs> circle jerks and it just revolves circle jerks and bowel movements <laughs> here here's a title card that uh that my buddy john and i did for one of our natural freedom league episodes this was uh about, i think two two or three years ago we decided you know what they everyone's saying the season of sacrifice and talking about the social engineers and the parasite class, we're going to do the season of sovereignty, right? We're taking it back. Life is not true, is not truly being lived unless we are free from the illegitimate rule of others. So season of sovereignty, like you said, man, it is empowerment. Um, and that's why it's important to kind of, you know, know thy enemy. So many people, I see this, so many people want to know, you know, the names of the high level social engineers. It's like, dude, you, you're never going to know that. And how does that create change? You take those fuckers out this out of existence, you know, right now, yeah. they will be replaced. It's because people don't understand culpability and who is actually performing the energy and the actions. And that's the the ignorant masses. Right. So that's that's right. You don't need to know their names. When you take your power back, you take the you take it from them. You don't need to know who they are. You know what I mean? You you reclaim your mind. 
that's the only way that they have power is dominion over your mind shaping your beliefs your attachments your behaviors you know your identity when you know who the fuck you are you're not living from a program that they implanted from you or into you that's right yeah man and the nailed it um the sacrifice thing too i think is important to reclaim i love the concept of the season of sovereignty but it can be the secret season of sacrifice too. Sacrifice is a sacred thing. This is something yes. our ancestors practiced. You know, there is a lot of power in sacrifice. It's something that's actually large, largely been lost. No one wants to sacrifice anything. They want everything for nothing. They're, they're entitled, just lazy, spoiled brats. You know what I mean? Yep. By and large in the modern day. Uh, sacrifice is, is one of the greatest greatest powers that we have is understanding the, the reciprocal nature of the universe that to receive you must give That's it right, is transactional and, and that kind of gets a bad rap as well you know what I mean like thinking transactionally like it's it's kind of tied to this hatred of money and all this kind of th thing money itself you know i think money is natural it's it's a uh it is man-made but it is made in the image of the natural ecology of energy that's what it is everything works through this it's gabo you know the runes yes. gabo yes Absolutely. everything is give and receive it's and it's also masculine and feminine uh polarity as well yeah, you know, one one of the biggest, uh, well said, by the way, one of the biggest kind of takeaways I hope people get is the emphasis on relationships for from this presentation, right? I mean, it's all about, it's all about relationships. This is what, this is what this reality is, how we are in relation to, right? How we are, um, the experience that we're having and it's it's relation to truth and, and everything that I talk about but yes it goes hand in hand with energy exchange you, again <clears throat> and these are I like to get to etymology but they're still words that I'm using it's understanding and comprehending what they mean in nature right I could say a certain word or express a certain concept and if someone isn't picking up on what I'm putting down, then there's going to be a, a contradiction there. And that's where relativism sinks its roots because relativism, one of its first like tenets, it wants to obfuscate words because as soon as someone thinks reality is relative or words are relative and they have no meaning, then we can't what we can't communicate. And soon as people can't communicate, it's done. Enslavement. Total enslavement. Words have purpose. Communication is the purpose. If you have to no commun meaning, you have no purpose. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Patty's question. <clears throat> Can action be taken with purpose on an energetic level? For instance, if a masculine and feminine got together with intent to create change. Uh, yeah, absolutely. 100%, 100%. Like collaboration. I think that's what she's referring to kind of collaborating to create change. Well, and specifically in the masculine and feminine framework, you know, whether you're talking about a man and a woman or the masculine and feminine within yourself, that is inner alchemy. That mm. is the, what magic is. Yes. Is joining the masculine and feminine, getting them together with the intent to create change. That is magic. 100%, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we're... It's like human beings are, we're nodes as well, right? A node on a plant is, 
it can it can grow from that node into its own own plant right so when you're doing grafting or um node cutting i mean i can i can cut a plant at the node and then soak it in water it'll grow roots and then bam i got a whole nother tree or a whole nother plant mm. this is what we the, the people that are doing the one great work and taking action in the world we are nodes every human being is a potential node so logan's a node he expanding and growing that message and trying to reach other people to inspire other nodes so what do we do it's really or you can look at it from the actual the the image of the web of weird it's the connecting points of the threads it's like mm -hmm. node right there and then it spreads off again or it's the the intersection of the branches of of plants like we're all connected and this is the purpose this is what reverberation is and the ripple effect it's creating that dynamic what it makes me think of is the blockchain which is another great example iter another iteration of natural law that's what's so beautiful about it is it is each node in the network represents truth just like i i am capable of understanding truth will is capable of understanding truth we're interconnected we're carrying truth inside of us but we're having a conversation right now just like the blockchain all the nodes of the network are communicating with each other saying here's here's my truth what's your truth and do they align and it's and usually then that truth is distributed across the network that's how it works and when one is not in alignment the other ones that have truth the truth of the ledger the the list of transactions on the blockchain say well that's not truth that's bullshit <laughs> we reject that you know what i mean yeah that's that's how we ought to be operating actually dude it's I pretty love it. profound it no that it is profound and simplistic as well like, i mean it makes it makes perfect sense but that's a uh, that that's a system that can be utilized let's see what if we got another few comments uh let's see let me take a sip of my lion's mane man long presentation i'm a running on fumes probably gonna we'll probably go for another 15 20 minutes and wrap it up if we anybody have questions go ahead and put them in the chat right now if you don't mind uh there's sev a, looks like a couple hundred comments um patty said in response to uh what our comment on her excellent earlier comment you know was uh she says yeah there you go yeah, talking yeah, about two of. people but it's talking about two people and i get what you mean yeah yeah i was kind of corroborating the inner and, and outer which is always at play the, the correspondence there it definitely applies to both um that is the power of the union between man and woman this is why there's such a strong war against this there's such disruption of polarity and healthy relationship dynamics between men and women it is the single greatest divide in the human collective for a reason yes exactly for a really good reason that polarization you just take out you know you you influence it's 50 percent of the population um and then that you know with a a dialectic the other the other 50 is going to respond in some form or fashion so it it's affecting a hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, Patty talked about the uh, April eight eighth solar eclipse. You know, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is right during the the season of sacrifice. Interesting enough. So you know, be vigilant, be aware of your surroundings. Um, you know, and. Uh, and enjoy that that portal of energy right that's going to be a good one that's important yeah it's 
these natural events are for us. Yes. We are natural beings. We are part of the ecology of, of all of that. They are the ones that are hacking these events and these energies. It's not theirs, you know. It, so, like, I assume you mean by concerned that they're going to do something to co opt that energy. But the thing itself is natural and beautiful and should not be feared. I don't think that's what you're saying necessarily, but I'm just saying to me, that's what's important is to keep that empowered mindset of like, these events are for us. We are natural born human beings of earth. You know what I mean? Well we said. can utilize that energy for ourselves. They might do something. There's nothing we can do to stop that if they're going to, uh, but we can tap into that if we want to and empower ourselves through that nature is here for us well said man at 100 percent, there's so much of that going around uh the fear porn and i rarely pay attention to it um i mean this is something that's been going on for years and years there's always some date that's going to be the end of days it's going to be the rapture yeah. you can see how active the christians are right now you know oh it's it's the rapture the the eclipse is is signaling this and that it's it's all you know perception management for behavior control it's to coerce and hijack your energy these these people are they're parasites a parasite needs to feed off of a host so they don't create anything new they just manipulate invert and that's that. I think Hyperlink has some questions you he, he would like to address. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's see which one. Hyperlink, can you put your main question in the chat again? You you had several. I already know where these questions are going. Yeah. Here, let's start with this one. Should we sacrifice our dependency on stealing the rights of animals and sensory pleasure? <clears throat> Christ conspiracy poses this question. Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? I'll give him this one question because it's nonstop on this. And and I'm not sure who this guy is, but I've been getting a lot of the the vegans coming after me. Um, and I stand my ground on it. I mean, I, I am a vegetarian of five years. Um, and but to think that veganism is going to correct and get us out of our current condition of slavery you're wrong. It's that's not the pathway. Sure, you could talk about morality, you could talk about rights, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But focusing on the belief in human authority, i.e. government is the first step is the first step. Sure, if someone can do that, if someone's on their spiritual path, and they can incorporate that in their diet, less harm, I'm all good with that. I agree with that. That's dope. But for the vegans, you are playing into the uh, into the dialectic, into the polarization, because you have not realized the cause. It has to go in the mind, and it's focused on human to human. We need to clean up, clean up our own shit before we can do any kind of change in the animal kingdom, which I would love to see. I would love to see that. But that's that's not going to happen until we we get rid of the governmental institutions and the control systems that regulate all of that stuff. So I, th I see the the mass killing of animals as an effect from a cause. So hmm. is, is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? I, no, not that I know of. The Native Americans thought so. And I actually... And I agree with the way the Native Americans operated because you want to know they operated with reverence, with 
respect, with a high regard and a relationship with nature, with their relatives. They used every part of the animal. Now, if, if we went back to that level of consciousness, we would be, we would be fantastic, right? But it's not about going to the past. It's about evolving from there. So, mm. yeah, I keep ranting on that. I, I can definitely add some to that from yeah. my own personal perspective. Um, I'm not a vegan. I have been vegan before. Um, personally, mostly for for health reasons i've never been healthier with the diet that i'm eating now but to your point will the animistic cultures knew how to live in balance and harmony with nature they totally. didn't exploit nature they didn't take more than they needed they took what they needed to survive and they were grateful for it and that is where I would like to get to instead of, um, you know, yes, I, I consume animal products made from factory farming. And that is very not ideal for me that it's where I'm at as a part of the process. But what I intend to do is own land and live off that land, whether it be crops that I grow myself or animals that I hunt and kill and clean myself and not need to rely on factory farming anymore so i can 100 percent agree factory farming is abhorrent it it should be done away with and if you want to consume animal products ideally you should be the one doing the dirty work you know what i'm saying and having that spiritual connection to nature and the animal that you're consuming and all that i take the kind of more pagan perspective on that so i admit that i'm not where i want to be and and i'm telling you where i would like to be in that process well said man and i and and i agree with with much of you said and hyperlink yeah i wasn't trying to like direct my my rant directly at you um i it was more about just th that topic yeah because i logan i do agree with you like there are certain steps that in the collective of humanity that we need to go through before we can we, we can have a certain level so um and understanding that you know the the main principle of nature is symbiosis is balance and natural law always is trying to reach uh homeostasis even though the consequences could be negative to the point where we're extinct. I mean, the planet would thrive from that, but that's not our purpose. That's not why we are here. We are here to be in balance, to facilitate uh, symbiosis in nature. And um, so, and, you know, in this current condition, I think that diet is, is a spiritual, spiritual choice that not everyone can do or is willing to do or is ready to do. Um, so until we get government and that belief in human authority, we reach that critical stage where the capacity and the potentiality of that elevation in human consciousness can operate. I mean, it's like it, even being a vegetarian, um, you know, I, I eat eggs. I, I do some butter. If we are here to be stewards, there is a balance of being in harmony with animals. And I've been attacked on many angles. Those aren't your eggs. I have wild chickens on my property. They leave 20, 30 eggs around on the property. And then the cats eventually come over and eat them. There is a process. Same with honey. It's like, so there's a give and a receive, a give and a take, and there that is symbiosis. So we need to we need to um, 
I'll touch on this. We can do both. No, you can do both is what you're saying. You're saying a lot of people can't. A lot of people can't, right? For you to be fully vegetarian first, are your veggies even uh, sustainable, bioavailable in nutrients? I mean, there's so many poison crops and the ground is infertile in a lot of areas. A lot of people are eating, you know, vegetables and stuff that are, um, that have no nutrition in it. I mean, it is a fact. You see a lot of vegans that are malnutrition. <clears throat> Can it be done? Yes. It takes dedication and sometimes, and you know, you have to take into consideration ancestral energy, the origins of our ancestors, where that energy is comprised in our genetics as well and in our epigenetics. So the transition is long and needs to, there's a long process of that. So can it be done? Uh, yeah, people can do it, but the getting on activating, getting on the battlefield so we can get that first most crucial stage of the enslavement of our species, humanity, since we are the stewards and we are there to take care of the animals for that, that balance, no change is going to happen for the planet, for the animal kingdom. Uh, for these ecosystems until humanity cleans up their own shit. I'm talking about in the aggregate. I mean, sure, a community can go and escape and, you know, live in the outskirts and, you know, <clears throat> have a homestead vegan lifestyle. Yeah, that's great. You know, all 15 of you, you guys are really creating change for the current human condition. So. It's a very complex and nuanced topic. Every individual is different. I think uh, ancestral diet has a lot to do with it as well. Not everyone even has the capability to healthy, just completely cease from animal products. And yeah, yeah it's just, it's, it's more of a personal thing than certain people would like to acknowledge, you know, yeah, for sure. And you, you and here's my main issue with it. Hyperlink. Listen to me. Do, you, don't hear me. Listen to me. <laughs> the reason why this is such a big problem <clears throat> is because it's polarizing. This is where very, all very. the militant vegans come out of the woodworks on my comments, emails, nonstop. They all come out and they all think we must accomplish this goal. Right. We must. This is the only way you do it. Where's your work? I'm doing what I got to do. I'm doing what I can do. I advocate that for several years. But where's your work? Put it out there. Let's get to it. So if we can, we should push towards both. Y yeah. If if somebody can go for it, that that's a personal de decision. We need to understand that we are in a state of war and enslaved. So we need people to get out there and talk about objective morality and the illusion of government so people can quit their cult. And sure, you want to talk about extending morality to the animal animal kingdom, which is which is true. I totally agree with that. You can do that. You can educate that it's just like Mark has Mark has his few episodes and then he, and he doesn't try to go there anymore because it's so polarizing. It's not him. It's other people that still need to do more of the work and get, get from that reactive polarization to more of the balance and need to understand that there are certain objectives that we need to accomplish in the aggregate. Right. Yeah. I know you guys have a weekly discussion. If this is hyperlink, if this is who I think it is, then I've seen bits of your guys' show and um, it's it's pretty whack, bro. All you guys do is just talk shit about people. So anyways, yeah, I'm he, done he on that rant. He specifically mentioned Jeffrey Phillips earlier. Oh, did he? Yeah. Got it. Uh, <laughs> that's not helping. Uh, that's not helping anyone. I, and I, I'm not trying to be a dick or an asshole, but just getting on a call with a group of people to talk shit about people, to troll people. I'm, ca I'm calling you guys out. I'm calling you guys out right now. This is what I'm doing. This is the meaning and purpose of this rant is I'm calling you guys out. You guys aren't doing shit. You guys just talk shit. And this does not help the cause. We need true education 
effective, efficient education, not trolling. Because all you're doing is putting yourself in a tunnel vision and pushing people's awareness away because of the reactiveness and the polarization. So that's my that's my piece. Let's move on to um, any other questions. Yeah. Had to yeah. get that out. <laughs> Be sacred space. Everyone, go check out her channel. She's uh, I did an interview with her. She's fantastic. Great show. It's always great to see you, Will and Logan, together. You're two amazing duo, <clears throat> and have always had so many amazing gems to share. Thank you, too, for the work you do. Appreciate thank it. You, yeah. yeah. Th thank you, B. That means a lot. Two, two things I'll say to that. First, um, I've received your email, B, and I will respond to you soon. B has uh, invited me to join her show which I would love to do. I'm just extremely, extremely busy right now. Second thing is we are amazing duo and uh, more on that very soon. We're going right. to be teaming up in a much more significant formalized way. People will um, hear more about that soon. Absolutely. Big news. So, I'm thrilled for that. Uh, it's hard to, not spill the beans. <laughs> Not spill the beans. <laughs> yeah. So excellent. Yeah. I think that's gonna. I think we're gonna wrap it up. Um, long presentation. Great chat on the the after discussion chat. Appreciate you always coming on, Logan. You always add so much. Um, go ahead and uh, let people know where they can find you and Thanks, your brother. work. Yeah. Yeah, y'all can visit thewizardfactory.com, and especially follow me on or subscribe on youtube it's where i put most of my specific uh best quality content long form stuff that's right excellent thanks man yeah yeah man. amazing presentation brother thanks for having me on it's always a pleasure and a and an honor and a privilege likewise man thank you so much for hopping on dude i'll put you backstage i'll do my outro and say my my piece to the people Thanks again. Peace, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Man, what what a long show. I, I love it. I love doing this. I love doing these presentations. I hope you guys have found value uh, in this presentation. Remember, part two is coming out in two weeks. I'm back on my regular schedule every other Wednesday. It'll be part two of the spirituality. We're going to dive into animism, it, the worldview the practice symbiosis with nature. So I'm highly looking forward to that. It's uh, it's definitely a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. So until then, you guys take care. Thanks for joining and uh, check out my work, all of my work at willkeller.com and big shout out to the One Great Work Network where we are streaming to. So my, uh, my producer, Aaron, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining, y'all. Appreciate it.